Just when you thought there was nothing left for you to do with your night, the Revolver Podcast, Mama Hot Flash, crew is hot, always doing you right. With a first take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds. Bump what you heard since birth on this earth, we know that the future belongs to the nerds. Revolve Alive, what you say? Revolve Alive, every Sunday at 6, bringing that gaming magic to your life. Doing it live on Twitch to show that you don't want to miss, be sure to subscribe. Crack yourself a brew, if it work, are you who now? You can join the crew for the ride. Xbox, mobile, and hot topics around the nation. To gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe, can't you see him glow? Talking brother, brother, flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go! go. Welcome Live. to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past, the future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer, one quarter of the coolest dollar you'll see on the internet, followed by my three amazing co-hosts, the king of all things destiny, Brian Rabbit. How you doing this week, my friend? Who's there? Get off my lawn. <laughs> it's all green behind you. <laughs> I don't know if you're in the yard or not. What's up, man? How's he, how you doing, Beastly? I'm having a... I'll be honest with you, I've had an awful week. I've been sick all week. <laughs> and I oh, felt God. like I was getting better yesterday, and then I started getting sick again today. So I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, you're I'm on a lot, of, a lot of over-the-counter drugs and a little bit of alcohol. That combination might not be good for you, but nonetheless, you look amazing. So I'm sorry to hear that you feel so bad, but you look so good. Welcome, my friend. Ryan Wilson, what's going on, sir? How you feeling this week? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling really tired. I have a glass trade show that i'm getting ready for next week and i am exhausted we've been pulling some crazy hours i got a buddy fellow glass blower who's in from out of town and when he comes into town uh we work hard we push each other to work hard so i did like a 10 in the morning till about six came home for an hour or two and then worked till about one two in the morning uh the other night and then went and did a full day of work the next day so i'm exhausted i'm ready to get this trade show over and make some damn money and play Destiny 2 on PC at the end of the month. I'm very, very happy for you, man. <laughs> I, I know you've been working really hard, and we'll miss you next week. We know you won't be here. We're going to try to get a stand-in. But uh, the work that you do, we really appreciate. I hear that there's a, a great business for glass be glass anal beads. I've never used them before. I feel I like that's that an awful idea. <laughs> I mean, he said he's been pulling, pulling long shifts all night. Who knows, man, what kind of glass he's making. But nonetheless... I'm really happy that you're working so hard. I can't wait to find out how everything goes for you next week. Thank you. Gary, the motherfucking Diaz. How you feeling, my UK brother? I'm feeling terrified out of my skin because presently I have a force of nature, which I have right oh, here that's with a me. Cute fucking cat, man. <laughs> At all times. This thing, like, has found every part of my equipment <laughs> that it wants to destroy. It's eaten <laughs> almost every cable I own. Um, it's, Let's I see that face one more time, please. Well, you, have a, you have a meme with you at all times. Wow. Look at him. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> oh, my God. See, look, let me just tell you guys who are watching. Unfortunately, for people yeah, who are listening on podcasts, Gary is uh, a psychology major, but he doesn't really boast it. He's already a very uh, handsome young lad, right? Himself. He has the pink diva hoodie behind him, and then he pulls out this cat. So it's like a triple threat. Makes just the, the fans fall in love. We understand what you're doing, Gary. Good job. I am drowning in ladies' various fluids. Um, <laughs> no, it's this this cat is um, a menace. It, I found it asleep on top of my PC where it should be letting out air. It's decided that was a great cool place to sleep. Yeah. I was wondering what it's the nice fans warm there, so Gary. It's, it's nice. It's very warm. Yeah. That was it. The cat was just. And it gets warmer the, the lo longer she stays there. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, yeah. At any point in the uh, in the preceding evening, you 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 may see the screen behind me shatter. She's she's already scowled it once. So, yeah, it's it's all going down. But um, I'm well, here. She she's a beautiful cat, man. I was looking at pictures of her on Twitter. You you did really well. I, I don't know if I could spend six hundred dollars on a cat, but just her face alone is worth a thousand. So I think you did really really well. Welcome. To Revolver Live, guys. Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. Twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. Uh, if you'd like to become a part of the show, submit your topics to Revolver Gamescast at gmail.com. That's Revolver Gamescast at gmail.com. We also share the video on YouTube at Briar's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed, 
or the video format, check us out in podcast form at Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live. Beasley, Beasley. You dirty motherfucker, you froze up. <laughs> oh, no, here we Damn go. It. All right, we, we, we got to wait for Beasley to come back to start our first topic because I wanted to ask him about the Super NES Mini that he managed to get that nobody else on the podcast was able to score. But, I mean... In replacement for that, we did get blessed with perhaps the best still image of Beastly I've ever seen. I agree. I agree. He does look happier than I've ever seen him. <laughs> he looks happy in still frames. But not only did he get one SNES Mini, he said he got two. Oh, what a bastard. He probably put the other one on uh, on eBay. Now he's going to pick who he loves the most, I think, out of us is really what he's going to do. That means Gary's yeah. getting it. Yeah. That's not fair. <laughs> I think you should just let it rot on the shelf, to be honest. Be before fair, agreed. Scary. agreed. Chuck it in the trash anyway, because it's the garbage American <laughs> skew. You know, it's, it's, that's not what an SNES is meant to look like. That thing's <laughs> trash. Well, well, well. Look who's back. We weren't talking about you at all. I know you weren't. And I'm going to kill myself. I don't know what's going on, guys. And and I was holding it just so when I came back, you guys would know the truth. I'm, well, if you I'm hold it too in. long, you're playing with it. Put it down. Put it down. <laughs> you can't. I'm going to go blind. I'm sorry. <laughs> You see, you got to plug it both ends. You can't just plug it into the laptop. You got to plug it into the router. The, it, it's the other end is always plugged in. God damn it! I'm sorry, guys. I was on a roll and then I just disappeared, just like a black guy at work. Look, no problem, BC. We want to hear about your your Super NES story here. Like, you know, how was it going to pick it up? Have you played in any? How's it actually yes. feel? T tell us a little now, bit about it. Okay, so Friday and you was can't use the two words awesome or amazing even once. Damn, that's but don't awesome. be afraid to use words like <laughs> wet and slippery. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Now, this or is going to be a challenge. The way it's meant to be <laughs> because wet and slippery <laughs> Super Nintendos break. Uh, or at least I would think so. Okay, so September 29th is a day that I've been excited for. Luckily for me, I have an awesome partner. My wife was actually the one who went out and did my pre-orders. I got two pre-orders. I'll let you guys know that. So the 29th, uh, when she woke up, she said, it's today the fucking day. She sent me a text. I said, yes, it is. I'm sorry, because she had to go to two different game stops to pick them up. Oh, nice. Uh, but when, when I came home, they were both sitting in my, my studio, and I walked in here, and I grabbed both of these amazing boxes. Now, this is the box that uh, has not been... One strike, the word amazing has been used. Damn it. So where, where are the penalties? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out strike, at the end of the show. You have to go one day without let's, playing. Let's use the Super portable. Nintendo... The portable SNES Mini. This one? one? Oh, fuck yeah. that. The YOLO. Fucking YOLO. The, the, the YOBO gets played. I'm sorry. It's um, not the YOBO, it's the YOLO. We've renamed it. The yo no. The yo no. The yo no. <laughs> so I came into my damn studio, and here there were two boxes in here, uh -huh. and there were the Super Nintendo Minis. And I just, you know, I did an unboxing video, but I didn't upload it yet. And I just looked at it for a while. I actually held up the original Super Nintendo to it. So you get like an idea. This is the packaging. This thing is tiny. The Super Nintendo is incredible. Uh, I went in my, my living room and hooked it up for my wife and my kids. My sons came from there dwelling, playing Borderlands 2 and Black Ops 3 for some unknown reason to watch us play this thing. And we got down for about three hours playing old school Super Nintendo games. Did they feel like the original experiences? Absolutely they did. Uh, is this Talk thing... to me a little bit about the hardware before you go into the games. Uh, okay. one of the, there were some complaints about the NES Mini. One of them was very short controller cables. Has that been addressed? I didn't have the original NES Mini. Uh, from what I understand, the cords were only three feet long, mm -hmm. which seems incredibly short. That's like a some in, you know inbox HD, HDMI cord. They're so short. Uh, these were five foot. Or closer to five feet. So we sat in the living room. We sat Still on the not outer... like long. Yeah, they're not long. I wish somehow they had implemented some type of uh, wireless technology, but it would have definitely inc improved and increased the price. Um, but I'll show you guys exactly what you get out of the box. You get the, the system. Of course, these flaps here hide the the true controller inputs. Those are the Wii remote controller inputs. Mm -hmm. They look, yeah, they look exactly like that. But of course, for the for the Super Nintendo controllers, the controllers are identical to the original. They feel just like the original from back in the day, where you couldn't really tell any difference. Mm -hmm. The power button actually is the real power button, so 
it works as the original Super Nintendo Power button. The reset button is the only way that you can go back to the menu. So, oh, so if it you doesn't want to reset play, the console. It acts like a. It goes it's back a to the home menu. button. So you have to have that thing within reach. Like it's pretty much within games. reach. Yeah, uh, and so that's the that's one thing I wish they did. They implemented some type of button on the side of the the um, the controller. Maybe kind of like the Yobo, put a button at the very bottom of their controller. Maybe Nothing Nintendo like done the something. Yobo. <laughs> I wish they had done something like that for the menu. Uh, as you guys can see, it has a micro USB. That is for the charging dock. It's just a micro USB cord with a, a standard. Uh, what does it plug. charge? It's not a charge, but it's the. It oh, is power, the power. Power. That's Got it. power. Oh, that's okay. And a, a standard HDMI port. So the good thing about this, it doesn't take much power to uh, to keep this thing going. I just plugged it into my PS4. I used my, my PS4 DualShock 4 charging port, plugged it into here. I actually unplugged the HDMI from my PS4, plugged it into here, and I played it that way. So it oh, was hold actually- on. So what you're saying is, like, I could find a use for my Xbox One and plug that into the USB <laughs> on my Xbox One? Absolutely you can. And actually, Fantastic. Like, you could buy two of these and plug it into both of your uh, Xbox One uh, Amazing. USBs. Yeah, it really does get... Well, then again, I hear there actually are some uses for the Xbox One now. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But we got into the games, Briar. Uh, I played a game that came out when my wife was two. Uh, she and I played Super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And it brought back memories of just insanity. Graphics looked like hell, but it was very, very fun. It took me back to my teenage years. Played some Donkey Kong Country. I beat uh, Super Punch-Out. And it just felt great again will i play this thing every day probably not so the, i don't this yeah. console actually comes with a previously unreleased game this is a pretty cool thing because star fox 2 it was a it. finished product you haven't played it yet no I, that I, is I the story the original- that's the story the beastly original- you're missing Listen, out on man, the story <laughs> i'm just being honest i wasn't a fan of the original star fox i thought it Look like shit, and I was not on that train. I'm How sorry. dare you? That was the I, first use of the FX chip. How dare you? Falco, he had some of the most incredible lines. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, on the game, it was amazing. God, it breaks my heart, breaks my heart hearing that again. The FX chip as well. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it never really did it for me. Um, I was more of a traditional gamer, and things like that just, uh, the visual aesthetic of Star Fox just did not do it. And I would like to see, you know, what they do in the future. Not with the last Star Fox, but I just wasn't really interested in it. But we did Super Mario World. Let the girls play that. They played Kirby. Uh, of course, I-, I loaded up The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, to show these kids just how treacherous a game can be. You know, played that for about 20 minutes. My sons want one of these, and they think they're going to get this one. This will never be opened. Link to but the yeah. Past is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games of all time because one of I my got favorite that games of all time for, for yeah for Christmas in 1992. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. and it's really good. And even though I know, <laughs> I know that game practically with my eyes closed. Um, it's cool. There's a lot of uh, randomizers out there, so it'll randomize the dungeons and the rewards that you get. So oh, it's cool. kind of like playing it all over again. A lot of people will do that for speedruns. It's really cool. And, and one of our hosts actually made an off-putting comment before we started the live feed today and said that the U.S. version of the Super Nintendo, or as he uh, calls it, the SNES, is not the real version. And that the UK, UK you version... You don't call it the SNES? Like, no. Everyone calls it It's not, not called... Nintendo. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I get it, you know, you call it the NES, the SNES, but do you call the GameCube the GUK? Do you now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go play some Golden GoldenEye on the GUK. <laughs> Look, I, I, you know, it's to each his own. I've never called the Super Nintendo the SNES. I've never called the Nintendo Entertainment Center the NES. Uh, and I understand, you know, abbreviations. I've just never really been one, big on them. But yeah, this it's is the real fucking Super syllables. Nintendo guy. The UK version looks like a gray Ninja Turtle shell. This is the real deal. Where you was, got a broke uh, Famicom. Where, 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 where are Nintendo shit. based? Where, where, what, what nationality of Nintendo as a company? Japan, but then there's also Nintendo of America out of Redmond, Washington. There is Nintendo Washington of America. Washington named after just... one of the greatest presidents of yeah, all time. They, mm-hmm. they developed this for the, the United States, for the U.S. audience. I don't know what the third I world is communist, strength. communist like you have. I think it's because the, the switches, they, they tested them on the U.S. audience. They found them too complicated to use. So you guys needed something simple. You could just press it with your donut fingers and just on. 
This motherfucker right here. <laughs> we gonna jump him. We'll see. Harry, did you guys just yellow after a long time, or was that just from all the donut glazing from the U.S.? Is that did you just solve the the yellowing of the Super Nintendo problem? I think it was. No, I was yeah, he just saying. Yeah, I can't even get mad at him. Your he fat just fucking donut fingers. This guy, dude. Like, let me see. Let me see your third world version. What do you got with that goofy ass power plug that you guys have? That makes no fucking sense yeah. at all. I don't have one, but the kitten just crawled into the subwoofer, so I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> just watched it get into the subwoofer. Let's drop that bass, Gary. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it out of there. Yeah. The so, Beastly, let me, let me ask you this. Um, you're a retro game collector anyway. Uh, if you have most of these games are the ones that you really want, and obviously I can't believe you didn't play Star Fox 2 yet because it is a very different game than Star Fox 1. I I think it's worth checking out. I want to hear what you have to think about it uh, next show. I'll definitely play it just because you asked. Yeah. Well, um, sure. you know, like overall impressions, the thing is $80. That's a lot of money. Like, what, what do you think? <laughs> hey, look, how much would The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past be right now in pristine condition? You uh, get free on PC. 30, 30 bucks yeah. is usually <laughs> about look, the man. fair price. You'll see it upwards into about the 40 range nowadays, but I, I'd imagine it'll stay at 30 and 40. Like, this like, is. Or like eight dollars on Virtual Console. This yeah. is one of the, the best values I've seen in recent history. Period. It you is. Get, you get two controllers out of the box. You don't need to go buy another controller for your friends to play. You get some classic Nintendo games. Some of them, which I own, that are amazing. Punch Out, F Zero, uh, Super Castlevania Four, Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country. These are all games I have. I have multiple copies of them that I've sought out over the years because they meant a lot to me, and I paid real money for them. Not only are you getting these amazing games, I don't have a link to the past. That's an incredible value. That's a game that I've been unable to, to purchase over the last few years. It's just, you know, I've missed it. How does everything so have, look on an HCTV? It looks uh, incredible. Uh, they have a pixel perfect mode that I played on. They have a filter to make it look like, you know, TVs of that era with little <laughs> fuzzies going across yeah. there. Scan yeah. lines so, or whatever. Lines and... things like that. Yeah. They have these little uh, perks. That can kind of suit an individual's taste. Here, but the go ahead, go DC. Ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say I was just gonna put the the debate to the test because we I, we've talked about this before. And if even if you were to buy the games on the virtual console, I mean, what there's 30 games on there, eight times 30. You 21 know, games. yeah, 20 21 games. I'm sorry. Uh, so eight times 21. You know what I mean? Like it's still a greater value. If you were to go out and purchase these games physically, I the cost that I came up to, and this was just based on eBay, which you don't have to do, was like upwards of eight hundred dollars. And you can't get Star Fox too. No. You no, not well. Yes, you can in a physical cartridge. It's it's a reproduction cartridge. It's not, not the full the version real that's on there. Yes, you can, hundred percent. Oh, really? The game, yes. I before it was even put into a reproduction cartridge, the ROM was dumped. There's a. I thought that was like a just a partial version of it, though. There's there's beta, but there's also a full version oh, that okay, has been bad. that has been dumped. Yeah, and you can get these reproduction cartridges for you know forty, fifty, sixty dollars. It depends on where you get them from, but like that's that's not Star Fox Two isn't the big seller for me in my opinion. It's that you have a great value of these games that are highly sought after. A game yes. like Legend of Zelda is not going to go down in price, just like Contra on the NES won't go down in price. Contra is not a $30 game. It's just that when it goes into a store, if you go into a store, there might not be a Contra there because it sells. It's a game that people want. And another thing, too, there's a lot of hacks and mods that come out for these games with, like, USB storage and shit like that, where you can basically turn it into your own little portable emulation machine i know that's a touchy subject or whatever but like briar said you can get it for free on pc i kind of think that's what he was hitting that so but i mean are super you, metroid are you saying that on. i would suggest stealing a game <clears throat> that most what you're of those, insinuating wilson most of those games it is legal to emulate because they haven't done anything with the properties um i think it's like the copyright i could be wrong is like 20 something years after the game was released if they don't do anything with the title it pretty much becomes freeware at that point I'm on eBay right now looking at Super Metroid. The cheapest one I see is for $30. God, I yeah, love that, that game. That, that's I a pretty good game. 49 41 58 I mean, it's an expensive game. And and to get a console with 20 other games, two controllers, and a beautiful form factor, the only form factor that matters in the world, for 80 bucks, you can't beat that. You really can't. Boom. Sorry, Gary. 
I'm Ooh. just not rising to it. One of the Stick things that that I'm sure you're noticing, <laughs> Beastly, on the, the SNES Classic that you have, the SNES Classic, is that games are probably a little more difficult than modern games. Although, Hell yeah! One of Gary's topics this week I thought was pretty interesting. Gary, why don't you take a run at this one? For sure. Um, really, it was just something I was thinking about a lot um, in my, my own head, time. Perhaps. <laughs> Or while playing Cuphead and while playing pretty much everything that isn't Destiny where the game aims for you. Um, for me, I was thinking, are games getting harder or am I just getting even worse than the minimal bit of skill that I had in the first place? So this came about from Cuphead, which is a beautiful game. And Briar and myself have, have been trading, um, trading thoughts on this all week, really, or since it came out, about how much we enjoy it. But how much of a bitch it makes you feel. I mean, Cuphead is brutal and relentless. It's like testicle clamps that are just tightened every death um, and every level Damn. you go through. Oh, I, I was talking to Sweep heavy. online the other day, and I compared it to a beautiful, proactive dominatrix who likes to step on your nuts. Yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's... <laughs> Ray just goes... <laughs> The aesthetic of it just doesn't match the game. And I've, I've noticed that there's a big trend lately, like Dark Souls kind of popularized it. And you've seen it with things like Ruiner, which I also bought this week and made me feel terrible about myself. <laughs> Salt and Sanctuary, the Crash Bandicoot remake, which was notoriously difficult. Strafe, which was, and again, all roguelike sort of games. I mean, is it a new trend or is it cyclical? Because what I've noticed is, like you say, things like the SNES Mini or SNES Mini um, highlight that actually 16-bit games and 8-bit games more to the point there, were made punishingly difficult because they were meant to be quarter munchers at the arcade. They were meant to be things that kept you playing and kept you losing. Um, but we seem to have gone through a plateau of games being easy back into more difficult games. And I guess it's it's a question of cuphead. You know, do you enjoy being, even if it's an attractive game to play, uh, Brian, have you enjoyed being made to feel that inadequate and pathetic? Yeah, I, actually I do. I the, the thing that Cuphead does, and that you don't, not every hard game gets right, is that even though it's very difficult, it's still fun. It doesn't feel like I'm losing because of cheap shot. I, I was talking about Star Wars, the Super Star Wars, a couple weeks ago, and how, saying like it was hard to go back to. And one of the reasons it was hard to go back to is it was definitely difficult, but a lot of that difficulty came from just cheap shots, right? Is you'd be running down the screen and all of a sudden, like, wham, something you couldn't possibly have avoided takes half your health bar away. In Cuphead, I never felt like that. I always felt like, you know, as I learned the boss fights or as I learned the levels, I could I could predict, I could react. I wasn't just getting hit by random shit. It was, you know, stuff that I had to actually... I never felt like it was unfair, if that makes sense. I, I felt like I had a decent shot of performing well. The controls are spot on, and it reloads instantly. So, like, when you fail, yeah. like, it, automat it just restarts instantly. There's no, like, load screen. I mean, it's like a second to reload the thing. So you, you just yeah. keep trying and trying and trying, and then eventually you learn the boss fight or you learn the level. So, yeah, I have been enjoying it tremendously, but it is fucking really difficult, and it can be frustrating. Sometimes you just get pissed off. You got you to stand up and take a walk away. So let me ask you guys, and, and of course, I got some thoughts on this. Uh, Cuphead itself, I've seen a few tweets from my co host Is this a must-have Xbox One game? Uh, it's a must-have Steam game, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a must-have. I mean, Thanks, aesthetically, Brian. it's absolutely gorgeous. The music is phenomenal. It's all so like the whole game is kind of based on 1930s anime or era animation, animation, yeah. right? And it really pulls that off well visually and with like the filters that it applies. It has like kind of old film stock. And the other thing about it that really nails it is the music and kind of the sound effects. It just Sounds and feels like it's stuff from that era. So, like, it's a very jazz themed soundtrack. You have like uh, individual characters that have their own theme song. Some of them are actually sung by the character itself. Um, just the title screen, like, kind of, it's a song that describes the story of the game. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's all like yeah. this kind of like 1930s, like, kind of, uh, I don't, I don't know, Mary exactly. Melody style. Yeah. Well, it's like a, it's real jazzy, but it's real like kind of upbeat and fun, like kind of. A hipsterish jet. I don't know the name it's for like it. It's a steamboat willy kind of feel to it, you know, like a yeah. kind of. Uh, uh, I mean, it just yeah. looks marvelous. It sounds marvelous. It just pulls off the aesthetic. It pulls off the look and feel it's going for exactly. And the controls are spot on. Like, 
I unfortunately I really hate the Xbox D pad, the Xbox One D pad. Um, I did move over. I put a PlayStation controller on it on my PC, and I was having much better luck with that, uh, just because I like the D pad a little bit better. Uh, but man, the controls feel spot on. It feels like it instantaneously reacts to your input. Like it's it's just a it's a damn fine game, but it's hard as nails. Would you say that it's like like not? the mood or the setting like as far like just mechanically speaking of the game is it like kind of mega man-esque but more chaotic like is it like memory because like the thing like you were saying was you know there were games back in the day that were designed to be quarter munchers at the arcade uh mega man wasn't necessarily released on arcade unless it was put into a nintendo play choice 10 cabinet which you just you could swap out the rom boards for yeah. and stuff like that um but I feel like Mega Man and like Ghosts and Ghouls, Ghosts and Goblins were like one of the yeah. first games to do that where it it wasn't necessarily your skill. Like, yeah, skill was involved into it, but it was more a test of your memory where you get to a certain area and it was yeah. semi-scripted battles where you could kind of control where you could like edge the screen a little bit back and forth and maybe control some spawns of enemies. But from the footage that I've seen, it just looks like a really intense version of say like Mega Man, Ghosts and Ghouls with the whole like side scrolling shoot 'em up. Is it more intense than Ghosts and Ghouls and Ghosts and Goblins? I would say the difficulty is on par with Ghouls and Ghosts for the for the Genesis or for the Super NES where it's just super difficult. It's a better it, game though. Wow. To me it's, it feels more like it the way it's set up, um and, and maybe it's worth talking a little bit about that is that there's two two ways the game is played. You've either got coin dash which is a run and gun style level where you're kind of collecting coins to upgrade your character with certain abilities but the bulk of the game and where the game is played is the dark souls element which is multi-phase boss battles so these bosses will have four to five sometimes six or seven phases that you have to learn and memorize so you'll get one phase nailed down and the boss will completely change form not like he'll shoot an extra weapon. I mean, like, you'll turn from a carrot to an onion and move around to a different place and do a completely different set really? of abilities. That, that sounds yeah, like yeah. A, a huge influence from the, uh, like, side-scrolling or, or isometric uh, or top-down view, like, shoot 'em ups mm. You know what I mean? You get to a boss and a shoot 'em up and uh, they have many different phases, and they'll, like you said, they'll just completely morph and change and throw, yeah. it feels like an entirely new actually, boss fight. It's actually got shoot 'em up levels, too, where you jump into a plane and you're playing, like... Yeah. You know, a, what we used to call a shooter where you're, you yeah. know, you're just kind of this pixel mm -hmm. flying around mm -hmm. on the screen. You have to, you know, it's, you know, bullet hell. Yeah, bullet hell. Okay. That's it's perfect. You nailed it. To me, it feels like playing um, a, a little bit more than Salt and Sanctuary, a, a proper 2D Dark Souls. Because you'll load in and it's just like, this is just a boss fight. And This, this is, is more like a 2D fight. Dark Souls than Salt and Sanctuary? To me, it is. In terms really? of the boss fight elements. Yeah, I mean, you've got very limited story you just like go and go and do this action for for an individual um and then you can upgrade your character based on the amount of coins you get but there's a finite amount of coins and there's more upgrades than there are coins available so the, the upgrades that you choose uh, will very much influence the way that you play okay. the game i don't know to, to me it kind of brings me on to part two of this topic which is where's the easy mode or god mode for players because for me i love the game like i do love cuphead but it's so cruel um, a mistress, you know, it punishes me so intently and makes me feel so shit. I know, I think there was a comment down there that um, Busy um, had said that, that he knows he'll probably never beat the game. I'd love to see all those boss battles. I'd love to see all the different phases of it. But the stress of having to put myself through it is just too much. Okay, so, I'm buying this game. There's no do you way. think that... There's do you really think that way. games need a way that you could just flick a god mode on every game? Would well, it diminish the game to be able to I, do I that? I think so it would. It. I think it would diminish the game, Gary, if you think about it. I think what they've done here is genius. They've created a game that looks extremely inviting to the eye, very uh, magical, whimsy world and characters that are reminiscent of 1930s cartoons, but they've uh, imported in, insane difficulty. And there are tons of games that you can god mode or, or you put on easy mode and go through. And, and I think that they created this for a reason. I don't think every game should be easy. Uh, and who knows whether or not down the line they get enough complaints and, and, and they, you know, do a additional DLC that allows people to play through it, you know, Super Mario style. But to me, this whole thing is so different. Every game has this, you know, easy mode or things that you can do and you can just walk through it and basically casually play the game. 
Uh, but this is very different. I've, I've watched the videos of the game for the last few months, uh, looking at the way it looks. I sat with my wife for about 10 minutes one, one night, and we just looked at it like, wow, this, I haven't seen any game that looks like this before. I didn't know at the time that it was insanely difficult. But to me, those things are... They're... To be honest, BC, it is doable. Like All the bosses that I've encountered so far, I have beat. Some of them have taken me five minutes to, to get through. Some of them have taken much longer. Some of them have taken up to maybe half an hour to you know, really kind of bash my head against, learn all the mechanics exactly where you need to be. It is beatable. Like every boss I've come up against so far has been beatable. I've, okay. I'm only like 30% of the way through the game so far. Um so but, this I mean, is not, not a short. This not is not a short game. I think it is a short game. I think it is. Okay, but the difficulty makes it long. <laughs> yeah, it definitely extends. <laughs> Which long. means you get your money's worth. It's only a twenty dollars purchase. And, and it, more to the point of the question, Gary, I don't think that we've we've gotten older and we've begun to suck. I think that we've been spoiled by games that are easy. You know, back in in the eighties, games were hard. When you went and bought, you know, a Nintendo game for seventy five dollars, and you went home and played it, the game may not have been a good game. But it was going to be a hard game, and it was going to challenge you. And we grew up with that. And as you know, generations come and gone, we've gotten to this comfort zone where everything is, you know, doable. Everything is easy. And if it's too hard, you can pause the game right there and change the difficulty. And we've become, we become, you know, used to this whole new mechanic that everything is doable. And I, I think it's refreshing every now and then to get a Dark Soul style game, uh, to to get something like Salt and Sanctuary, or to get something like this. That you know the people who want to play it and beat it, they've got to put in time and effort. And, and like Wilson said, you got to remember it. I think I remember a lot of conversations around the time of um, God of War, like the first God of War, like the PS2 era, the early PS2 era, uh, Xbox era, where a lot of developers were talking about how they were spending all this development time on like the last half of a game, and their metrics were saying that you know, 80% of players never saw that content. So I, I think there was a shift in the industry to say, okay, you know, we want the whole game to be awesome, but we also want the whole game to be accessible by the players who buy this game or play this game. So they did reduce the difficulty of a lot of games and that you started seeing adaptive difficulty where if you failed three times in a row, the game would kind of get a little easier. Um, you saw the normal difficulty on games become kind of the easy mode that we were mm -hmm. more used to, you know. And then you'd see developers come out and say, you know, if you really want to experience this game the way we meant you to play it, you should put it on hard mode, but the default is normal, uh, just so that everybody gets a chance to play all the way through it. So you started to see, you know, these the shift to easier gameplay because developers were pissed off. You know, we we have all this game that you never saw because you just didn't get there, you know? Yeah. Well, like speaking from personal experience, like any time that I've jumped into a game and whether it be putting in, and I, I guess I should start off to say there should be varying levels of difficulty for sure in any game, easy, medium, hard, very hard, whatever. Um, <clears throat> however, if there's a game that I'm struggling with and I find a shortcut or an easy route, whether that be a cheat code, whether that be yeah, just turning on God mode for that level to get to the next one. Uh, the reward is definitely diminished, but it it takes away the experience of getting to the next level on your own and being excited about it and like wanting to say maybe maybe not in Cuphead, for instance. I don't know if there's like a whole lot of story to the game, but advancing in the storyline, finding out what's next. Some games. Um, their difficulty may give you a different ending, may give you extra cutscenes, things like that. That stuff keeps me going. Um, but it's, I don't know, like, like I said, I think there should be varying levels because you never know, like, you know, someone could receive a game for a gift and not know anything about it. This could be their first shoot 'em up experience. So, you know, maybe there should be an easy mode and it could be their introduction to that type of genre game that could come to be their favorite. But if they have a really shitty experience with it the first time, they're not going to want to, you know. And if a game's too hard and there's no, if there's no way to bypass a certain part, you may just get sick of it and never, never move on with it, right? Exactly, that, and it's got to be rewarding. So there has to be a carrot at the end of the stick, whether it's an extra power up, whether it's an advancement in story. Because yeah, sometimes just getting to the next level isn't. 
like yeah it's cool but it's like what does that really do for me you know what i mean like i don't <clears throat> i don't have anything to show for that you know so like an upgrade point or something or just some sort of an ability would be really cool like just to for, keep you playing and enticed for for me i think that's a subjective kind of argument because you know back in the 80s there are people playing their their nes and they had to play through these incredibly tough games and they had to figure them out they had to continue to play them some kids got one game a year and it may have been the hardest game of the year and they just had to play it and they just played it and played there are people who played dark souls that was their first video game uh and and some people may have shied away from it but there were also other people who rose to the task and fought through it and and mastered it and so for me for a developer to to create something their vision of a game something that's brutally difficult and incredibly beautiful to see at the same time i think it's a it's a it's a special kind of recipe and and for them to sugarcoat it or water it down for those who may have walked away from it versus those who stand for the challenge, I think would have been the wrong decision for them. Because I grew mm -hmm. up playing tough games. You grew up playing tough games. Briar, you remember how hard games were? We talked about that a minute ago. Different time, though, Beastly, because when I was a kid, I did get one game a year. So I wanted it to be hard so that I had a challenge for the whole year. If it was super easy, I'd be done with it in four hours. I'd be really pissed off. But now I'm an adult. I want to play a lot of different games. I want to experience a bunch of different stuff. And I can sympathize with Gary. I don't know that I agree with Gary, but I can definitely sympathize with Gary here because he doesn't want to spend the next month banging his head against Cuphead just to see everything. He just wants to see everything because it's beautiful and it sounds amazing. My Let's question please. Is not so much do you know, can we make games easier for my stupid fingers. Um, it's more how would me having a god mode available ruin it for you it ju i just want an extra option that you can ignore it altogether you can play it whatever you want but when those things are available thing? normally they just disable any like trophies or achievements yeah. you get, um, right take take all my achievements away it doesn't matter just let me play through it just let me see like it. i said yeah for me I ju i'm just saying it from my my own idiot fingers but also from people with genuine physical disabilities you're, you're stopping yeah. and playing a huge amount of games but let's say I, I just for whatever reason don't don't have two capable hands to use a controller or let's or say my reaction busy time doing something else exactly yeah, if i want to just jerk it jerk it whilst i'm playing <laughs> cup because the graphics are that damn beautiful um i should be allowed to here's and, the know. deal here's the deal i totally agree with you 100 percent. disability is something that should definitely be brought into account with the development of a lot of video games with that said I'm going to shout out somebody who was super inspiring for me when I saw them play. There's a gentleman, young man, who goes by the name Half Coordinated on Twitch. He has a disability where he can only use one hand. And this dude plays shoot 'em ups, Ori in the Blind Forest. He's got world records for these speedruns with Whoa. one hand on an Xbox 360 controller. And is one He's of the playing most with a, a regular controller. Is yeah, he's, oh, he's him. He's using the best controller of all time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why, because everyone thinks it's you know so comfortable and stuff. So it, it was just super inspiring. You know what I mean? Like this dude fucking kills it, man. Like, and I'm not saying that every. Mm. I get it. Like, if I, you know, he's got a lot more willpower than I do. You know what I mean? If something happened to my hand, I would, you know, I would probably just complain about it the entire time. Yeah, but. There's definitely some extraordinary people out there, but with that said, yeah, I do agree, man. Like, because not everyone's gonna have that ability. Like, if something ha happened to my hand today, I'm not gonna be setting any kind of records tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean, you have to, we'd have to practically relearn how to play a video game. So, to answer your actual question, though, I don't think having a god mode would hinder my experience because I would have to make the conscious decision to turn it on. Hmm. The the problem is, I, I is that the, I may make that decision. And then the game is essentially done for me. I, I may get so mad at some point and just go, fuck it, I'm putting on God mode and then play through the rest of the game. And I'm never touching that game again. I know myself well enough to know that I'm never touching that game again. Mm. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you. I, I respect their decision to make this beautiful, brutal game. Um, because you know that that is going to turn people off, right? They're going to lose some sales because... Some people are going to hear about how hard it is and be like, well, it's not really my style. I'm not going to do that. I'll watch a YouTube video about it. Yeah, it's Agreed. interesting. I just thought it was worth talking about. I mean, going from games that are super difficult to games that are super easy and that anyone can play. What's been happening on Destiny this week? Because I hear there's been a faction rally. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. So for all of you Destiny 2 fans out there, it's no secret that we got a uh, we got an event this week and it was called the Faction Rally. So we've had some time, we've played the story. <clears throat> we've we've done the thing, we've become legends once again and now the factions are coming back. Um they are at the tower and essentially um you're doing a lot of the activities that you've been doing, but you get coins that you turn in that you can get specific gear with. Um, there's a full full armor set for every class for each faction. There's a handful of weapons, not all of them, a handful. But the twist is whoever, whatever faction turns in the most coins for that week gets a um, gets to purchase a uh, weapon that you can only purchase through them. So if you, for instance, if you pledge to Future War Cult, and Future War Cult ends up winning, which, I mean, let's be real. If you're doing it right, you're pledging to Future War Cult. Otherwise, you're a savage. You know what I mean? So you should be turning those into Future War Cult. <laughs> but, you know, just throwing that out there. So, uh, in other words, if you uh, if Future War Cult wins, everyone can purchase this uh, Pulse Rifle. <clears throat> if you were with Future War Cult, you get it for like a 1,000 Glimmer. If you weren't, you got to pay 50,000. So that's kind of the catch, which in the scope of things, 50,000 Glimmer really isn't that much. But I thought it was a funny little... Like, you know, fuck you to everybody else who chose the wrong side. So it And to be clear, really, if you didn't choose Future War Cult, you did choose the wrong side. It's true. You would be called this out. It's okay to dip into the new monarchy for the shaders, get your shaders, and then just if get If you're out. vain. If you're vain. It's true. I get um, it. <laughs> but um basically my question to you guys, um, I have a few here, but starting with like, did you guys how did you guys feel about the faction rally so far? And did you guys think it was what like did your perception of what you thought it was going to be come to reality? Did it turn out what you thought it to be? Briar, why don't you start? Uh, no. It, it, it had so much opportunity, and they made a couple of decisions that really, it really took the bite out of it. The fact that the, your allegiance is character-based basically takes all of the fun out of the event for me. Um, if it was account-based, so you... You made the decision for your entire account. You would feel, I, I believe you would feel so much more attached to your team because you wouldn't be able to just have three characters, one on each faction, and win no matter what. Uh, the fact that it is character based just kind of takes the bite out of it. It takes the, you know, it takes the rally out of it because you're gotcha. just kind of hedging your bets. Um, and I think it could have been a really cool thing if it was account based. You think it's possible they could change that in the future, Briar? No, I don't that, think they will. That does seem to kind of break the mechanic if you can have three different characters for each different rally. Yeah, I don't think they will. No, I think they, no. they've made wow. up their mind on this one, and that's how it's going to work. Here, I so, know you kind of did, did you did you choose all three factions as well, Briar? Uh, I don't really give a shit, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did. You're not you're not down with that. I got you. It, it, I did. Once I figured out that it was character based, I was just kind of like, well, I can just get the, all the weapons anyway. So, what's the point? Yeah, it really. It, as soon as I found out it was character based, it really fell flat for me. Got gotcha. you, Gary. Yeah, why don't you elaborate? It, yeah, my my take on it all was just like pretty much to echo Brian. Massively missed opportunity. My. My view on being able to choose one of each side is, is kind of neither here nor there. I, I see the appeal of of making you pledge and making you get um, behind them from a from a law perspective as a community. But for, for me, it's more the activity itself. To label it an event, I think, feels an incredible stretch. Um, the gameplay of the event um, is effectively what you've been doing for anyway. all other yeah just go to a public event and do the public event you'll get some additional stuff there's some variance in that there's a couple of additional public events but they're very pedestrian public events they're just a case of stand by a box and if you stand by this box for you know three minutes you'll get a couple of tokens um and people have found like a new omnigal farm where they go in they shoot some boxes and they kill themselves so that's that's interesting um but aside from that there's no major change to the way you do it you see my my view is that there was going to be an adventure of some kind added maybe with like your faction leader giving you a voiceover which helped explain some of the law behind why you chose that faction what's really disappointing to me and i'll sort of end with that statement and see what you guys think is that i've learned more about the factions from three seven minute 
videos by My Name is Bife on YouTube where he talks about what the factions are and where their history is than I have from the entire faction rally itself and Destiny 2 more, moreover. And that to me is a failing of the game once more to not put the lore or the story in the game. Uh, real quickly, I haven't done you know all the faction activities. I joined one. Uh, but from what I saw, it just didn't excite me. I'd rather, you know, play Crucible. I'd rather do other activities and just sit around and do what I feel like I've been doing all this time anyway. So I had no real desire to just stick with faction-based activities or events or whatever they want to be called. You know, I, I'm turning in coins when I get them, but I'm not, I'm not focused on this event at all. It just hasn't really pulled me in like so many of the other activities of the game. Um, I thought like I came into this conversation, um, without talking to you guys about this beforehand, like I said, I've been really busy this week, so we haven't really had a chance to play like any destiny two or anything really. Um, mm -hmm. but I was coming into it thinking that I was going to be the devil's advocate and yeah. have <laughs> some bad things to say about it. So I hate to be, I do have some good points that I'm going to make here. I do agree with you guys. Um, Gary, I'm really glad you touched on the is this an event? Because in my opinion, we've been doing this shit for three years in Destiny 1, grinding for factions to get loot. You know what I mean? So to label this an event, in my opinion, like it's a little stretched. Like I was really hoping there was going to be potentially exotic class items tied to a certain level, some sort of a quest, even if it was just a little little tease of a quest. I want to hear more Iraq Jalal. I want to hear that crazy Russian voice actor. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the dude from Armageddon, the, the Russian space station guy. He played the devil in Constantine. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's him. Yeah, yeah like, so I, I wanted to hear more of Iraq Jalal. I wanted to hear more of Executor Triple Rec Hideo and the crazy, you know, um soothsayer future tellings of future war cult you know what i mean because their lore is amazing like there is some deep shit with future war cult like them using time machines to like look back on like when like the darkness invaded our solar system and like the people were their minds were shattered because of this so, like the darkness is even affecting people in a simulation and not yeah like it's that deep so like I was a little disappointed that there wasn't story, some sort of a little quest line, an exotic class item or whatever. With that said, though, um, it was a good opportunity and a reason for me to get out there and do some public events because public events, if you got a team of three, like forget doing the, the solo going into the caves and farming that way. It is a very quick way. Um, double dipping public events is really good. Um, so if you're solo, you get a public event, get your loot, fast travel back to the closest place, and there could be a chance that the event is still there. I found that very successful. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say, though, um, I'm happy that it got me out there farming public events because I have been kind of cleaning up on a couple. There's still a couple of exotics that I still need that that I've been getting. Um, I will say, though, man, those, uh, those new Monarchy shaders, man, have you guys yeah. seen those? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're, they're not sexy. Yeah, they're not. I have future war cult gear on my hunter with new monarchy shaders. He looks now you're talking. fantastic. Now you're talking. Hove, last yeah. night I was playing with Hove. His he was like jaw dry. He's like, You are stunning, I believe was the <laughs> words that he used when it was the trials intro. Yeah. And no uh so I've been taking on this whole thing of like a brother a gospel of the future war cult. So all night last night, I just turned every conversation into like like a Mormon approaching your front doorstep and like asking for donations or have you heard, heard about the, the, the good word of the future war cult? The future <laughs> war cult. Yeah. And like, it, I kind of stretched it out a little bit, like, but it, it was a good time. Um, I will say though, like it's a cool event with a lot of potential. I think there's a lot of ways they could add to it and it will change. But as far as the pledging thing goes, I don't know if that's going to change, but I mean, they could totally add things to it, like to make it, a um a better experience but man i was really hoping for exotic class items i was really hoping for one story mission with like gary said a voiceover of these people i want to know how, i want to know how their struggles during yeah the red war like they had like uh, you, you go to talk to yeah you know, the you, pledge should have been just even a, a um, an infographic of the lot just something something that told me who the hell this faction is because 
going in, you've got the elevator pitch, which was the two lines from each person mm-hmm. going, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, whoever, I'm Tits McGee, I'm someone else. And then that was about as, as much as they told you. Once you pick their faction, you shot containers and then they gave you armor and weapons and occasionally gave you one liners. Like for me, it needed one story mission. It needed one, even adventure. It needed your faction giving you voiceovers during the public events, little snippets, drip feeding you lore, something. It needed something and it it didn't have any of that. And that for me was just, you know, I, I can't defend it. I mean, I, I love Destiny. I love the game. I can't defend that event. It, to me, it was a Festival of the Lost level failure. Damn. Put the nail in that, Gary. Put the nail in that shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I part really of the future agree with you, Gary. Cult. I really do. But I, I chose the future war cult as well. So of course you did. Right Good there. choice. You're, you're a doing rational God's human work. being. Yeah, you're doing God's work. I just want to throw <laughs> that out there. Even if you do own a Yoba. <laughs> future war cult. I got to get the future war cult Jesus, skin. Well, that's new thing. monarchy colors as well. You just need to paint the black bits gold. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. You yeah, had that. another topic about Destiny this week. What, what were you talking about? Ah, uh, okay. So, this is a question. Actually, this topic came from my wife. It was something I mentioned to her last week. I wasn't going to have it as a topic, but she was talking to me about it, and she said it would be a good topic to figure out what we're doing wrong and why it's so different. Why is Trials of the Nine so different than the Crucible? Okay, so here's my little monologue. Trials of the Trials is a weekend Crucible event that pits four versus four in a series of fast-paced matches where the team either defends or plants explosives, and I love that mode. Unfortunately for me, I'm pretty bad at it, sometimes playing three or four full games without my team winning a single match. Yes, it's happened numerous times. The Crucibles, uh, the Crucible Quick Play, on the other hand, is a different animal for me. And while I beast most matches, I'm rarely outclassed in the same manner as I am in Trials. Why do these competitive modes feel so different? And I, I look think... to the masters of the game to explain to me why. Care if I start, Briar? Absolutely. Yeah, go, go. Um, I think, uh, like one of the main factors is, um, the stakes are high when you add rewards that reflect your performance. Um, it makes people play a lot more different when you add the carrot to the end of the stick, people are going to play as hard as they can and as sweaty as they can to get that carrot. So the carrots are three, five seven and flawless three wins five seven and flawless each one of those gets you a carrot on the end of the stick um another thing too is that a lot of people that are pvp players uh they they define how good and this isn't everyone and and this may sound a little negative but a lot of people define themselves and others based upon their performance in trials. Um, Sometimes they put a little bit too much pressure on themselves to be one of the best when ultimately, I mean, we've been around a long time, guys. We know anybody could potentially be anybody on any given day if the settings are right. Everyone makes mistakes. The big guys make mistakes. Like sometimes connections are against you. Sometimes it's just out of your hands. You know what I mean? Like if there's a game where you're just raking people over the coals and they're not even reacting to you, there's a good chance that connection's on your side. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like Trials promotes this like best of the best competitive. I can't help it, dude. I start my card for fun and then I go in and I start getting sweaty as fuck, dude. I can't yes, help you it. Do. I'm a competitive I person, win. dude. I I'll want to you, win. And I... <clears throat> I don't don't get me wrong like it's not like like I, i'm upset with someone if like we don't perform it's just in the heat of the moment man like we're there we're capable of doing it like i said anyone can be anyone on any given day you just have to work as a team and that's another thing too when you're in the regular crucible there's a lot more people playing around with different weapons there's a lot more um quick play casual sense like when i go into quick play man i'm not using mita last hope or nita mita and uriel's i'm trying out you know against my better judgment you know the trials hand cannon because i watched a video with tv making it look good even though he's like i need to stop watching his videos he makes these crappy guns look so good right (laughs) and like you go in and you just get shit on but like it (laughs) it, crucibles regular crucibles different because it's a much more casual set where either you're gonna get rewards or you're not at the end of the game whereas in trials if you get to three five seven and flawless you're getting loot and people want to get there 
And even though I pretty much have all the loot from Trials of Osiris, like I can't help it, dude. It's my my old caveman male dominant. I want to win, you know, and it's not even necessarily to rub it in people's faces. It's a bonding experience of like winning. Like we came together and just, you know, shit yeah. on a team that should have shit on us. It's fun. It's it's one of the coolest thing. It's it's something that Destiny did that was absolutely fucking genius in year one. I think it might have saved the game. By adding like those those rewards, those performance based rewards to PvP and making a team based activity where you had to get your team together and then you had to go in and fight. Uh, I think, you know, it's really a beautiful thing. But you are certainly coming up against, up against tougher competition, you know, to answer your question, Beastly. You in quick play, there's no skill based matchmaking, or there's very little skill based matchmaking, apparently. You're just coming against all sorts of people. Maybe they're just playing around with a couple of buddies. Maybe they're you're you're coming in with a group of four, and you're coming up against all single people like who have never played together before. They're not even communicating. Mm -hmm. um, they might be new to the game, not know what weapons to use. When in Trials with Cyrus, you're very likely to see only the best weapons in the game, right? You're not gonna see people experimenting too often with. Oh, I Got this new auto rifle. I've never tried it before. <laughs> Throw it on for a, a match of Trials of Osiris or Trials of the Nine. People don't do that in Trials of the Nine. It is serious business in Trials of the Nine. You get in there. You're looking for your loot. You, I, When I'm in there, I feel like my teammates are relying on me, and I'm relying on my teammates. So there is a, there's a certain amount of just performance that everybody's just trying to step up their game in Trials of the Nine. You know, so it is very different experience, um, but it's very fun. I, I think it's very fun. It is. It's it's very fun. That's even though we lost, we got our asses handed to us. Uh, I was usually at the top, and uh, we still had a great time. Great teamwork time. is so fucking key in that mode too. Huge, mm -hmm. dude. I mean, huge. You, you can raffle stomp some teams where your team just goes off and is fucking about. We we had a we had a game like that, Gary, on Saturday with uh, Sweep and and. Um, and JJ Molina, where we were just, I mean, we just got lucky too. It was like every match we got into, we just stomped everybody. So everybody just on spawn, just split up and just were racing to get kills. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a bunch of sharks in the water, yeah. just hunting fish. Damn. I mean, but, that's pretty much my approach to trials. That's kind of the only way I play it. I mean, I've played a lot of trials through Destiny's lifetime. And I don't play it as a super, super competitive thing. I just go in with guys that I know I'm going to have a good time with, win or lose. And I am the least competitive person here. I have no illusions of being the best at the best. I just play and enjoy it. And for me, I don't know. I think that some of the um, the pain that you're feeling is more, um, not so much how hard it is, but maybe how different it is. And it's something that you're maybe not used to, the style of play. And I think it will come from playing it more. You'll find that you'll ease into it and you'll understand that it's a much slower game, a much more tactical game in competitive than it is in quick play because your deaths mean something. There's actually, a, a aside from a score on the enemy's um, meter, each time you give away a play, you make the job so much harder for your team to then win that round. And mm -hmm. it's a snowball effect. One, definitely with 4v4, um, I guess you could argue with 2v2, it's a, it's a bigger percentage, but at least in 4v4 in this game, by taking 25% of your team out of play, you've taken you know a, a significant amount of team shot potential away. So, yeah, I think it's, it's not necessarily a harder game. All the things that you guys have said are correct. People come and bring their A game, uh, but it's also a different style of play. And if you've not played a lot of competitive playlist, you'll, you'll notice the difference there about how, how much you have to play your life. I haven't played competitive at all, or a competitive playlist at all. It's all been quick play for me. When it when it boils down to it, like yeah, it you, you're absolutely right, Gary. It should be about going in with people that you are just gonna have a good time with, regardless. Like cracking jokes, dick jokes, uh, yobo jokes, <laughs> yes. you know, whatever, whatever it's gonna be. Um, it's just more of like a heat of the moment thing for me. Like when I'm there, it's you're, you're there. It's I can't help it because and maybe it kind of goes back to that topic where I was like trying like Briar was saying that, you know, when it comes to trial, I try to be a natural born leader. Maybe that's like the the quote unquote subconscious leader in me coming out because I see so much potential in every single person that I play this game with. Like, you know, like, yeah, there's going to be people who stand out. There's going to be TVs and real crafties who can 
you know, hold their own against two or three people. But like, as a team, nobody stands in your way. Like that's the potential that I see. And You're a fucking leader. You, this guy got me ready to, to go now. Well, Shit. You, have, yeah. you have to work as a team. If you're not a TV, if you're not a manigator, if you're not a Hovey or a Crafty, <clears throat> you know, like four is greater than three, three is greater than two, and two is greater than one. Anytime that you have team on your side, that's you, math should potentially, right there. you should potentially win. And I don't match <laughs> people. You know, and that is not my strong suit. But like my point being is like it's not – necessarily knowing where the team is i also have to look at my radar and or or not necessarily knowing where the other team is i have to look at my radar and see where my team is so gotcha. that when i duck back into cover is my teammate there to cover me or is my teammate right on my ass to where i cannot duck back into cover mm-hmm. you know another thing too is that versus quick play in quick play i just react i just go with the flow in trials of osiris every move i make i make with the conscious decision, can I get out of there if shit hits the fan? Where am I going to run to if shit hits the fan? That will save you a lot of time and trouble in your engagements on, you know, not knowing what to do once you take fire. Before every move and every position that you go up to, if you say, how can I get away from here safely, you'll win a lot more of your engagement. Because that's huge, too. It's not knowing when to kill. It's when to back out. And working as a team is huge. If you got a, if you got a homie with you, shoulder to shoulder, and you're battling a guy, and because of high caliber rounds with meet a multi tool, your gunshots are now RNG as to who's going to win. You get that guy half health swing back in as your homie swinging back Swings out. out. Yeah. He now has to engage someone with full health. You know what I mean? And the rope a dope, as I've dubbed it, is huge at winning games. You can still see a lot of that in quick play, man, because sometimes even in quick play, like when we're on a uh, five, six game winning streak, you know, the, the dominant male starts coming out again. And as Gary would say, I want to spray testosterone all over the place and keep this, keep this streak going, but you'll see it in quick play too, but not as much, man. It's just a whole different beast. Well, and let me just say, it's been a pleasure playing with you, Wilson. You are a born leader. You are the fucking captain America of revolver. That's not even a joke. It's not true, man. Uh, like I said, man, just, there's not always like a true leader, man. So like I said, sometimes you got to know when to follow too. I don't always have the greatest ideas. There's times Briars had to bring me down in D1. He'll be like, okay, Wilson, I get it. Fuck that guy. Next round. Let's get it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck that there was guy. Oh, my Wilson at his strongest. Yeah. <laughs> when, we were, when we were doing the raid a few days ago, there was a guy, I don't remember his name, who was playing with us, who made like a joke about Wilson being a natural leader. And that's something we talked about last week as well. And, and it's like, you just, you, you definitely are. Yeah, you go. It was like, oh, yeah. the, uh, that reluctant natural born leadership yeah. there because I, we were like, how do we do this phase? And it was just crickets. Yeah, I think I want to start calling you Captain America, man. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Don't, man. You motivated me today, too. I shit. don't take compliments well. <laughs> Wilson wins through strong leadership and team motivation. And I, I put myself down to just cheating at PlayStation. That's kind of how I've maintained any level of capability. Just buy a Zim 4. And cheat. It's far easier. <laughs> yeah, you've been you've been mouse and keyboard in it, Gary. So and you're an he animal is. too, man. You're an animal. Yeah, Gary is an animal, is. dude. Yeah. Like he, he, is. he doesn't take compliments well either. He kind of brushes them off with that cute little smile and that little uh... English muffin look, you know, and then we just get lost in our <laughs> own big compliment. English like, muffin eyes. He's so <laughs> gorgeous. I don't even remember what Straight. I just said to him. So Straight uh, cable trash, like, man. Straight Gary is trash. Trash fantastic player he says he's not competitive i feel like on the outside he's not competitive and subconsciously without him realizing or not he's just a fucking animal at this yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. i've seen him i've seen it kind of come out you know he's very proper he's he's very soft-spoken it's usually late at night when he's playing <clears throat> but i've heard the like I, like within like gary's least within testosterone spraying yeah. abilities like he's <laughs> you happen, go in I'd... man you do and you do it happen. casually. I, just, I like my my PUBG motorcycle tours just to trigger Briar. That's kind of what I'm what I'm best at is just getting on and kind of sabotaging our team's chances. You killed us all, you bastard! It's good. It was a good I'll time. I'll never forget I, the uh, the motorbike in PUBG where Briar's like, Gary, I I'm getting I'm getting really tired of you being on that that motorcycle giving our position away. And then the game ended, and Gary's like, I have to go to bed. You know, I love you guys. You know, we're always like, you know, a little bromance at the end of our sessions. Yeah. And uh, he leaves, and Briar goes, I wonder if I was too hard on Gary about that motorbike. 
It was a good time. It was a good time. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to the, my next topic. And this is one that might sound like it's one that we've done before, but it's really different. It's something I thought about uh, actually last week, and we talked about it after the show, and we decided to bring it up this week. So you guys, be sure to let us know what you think in the comments or at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. The hidden perk of digital gaming. Okay, so we all know about the ease of in access of buying digital games, but there is a huge benefit that nobody has ever talked about until today. Anti-theft gaming. What is that? What does it even mean? There was a time when a burglar could steal your console and your entire gaming collection. Now, if, you're home, if your home is burglarized, you can repurchase your stolen console and log into your Xbox Live or PSN account and re-download your entire collection. Buying digital has in a way killed the effect of theft when it comes to our video games. And that's something I thought about last week. I was looking around in, in my studio and I was like, man, if someone were to break in here, that'd be like $10,000 worth of shit they could just grab and run out of my house. And then I was like, well, I got like 330 games with my PS4. I could buy another PS4 and install all my games. So that will never be stolen. And to me, that's a really cool benefit of buying digital games. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Have you even ever thought of it? Yeah, I mean, I think you bring up a good point soon. I think an, another thing, um, I grew up in a very cushy uh, neighborhood. You know what I mean? It was just kind of the neighborly, oh, hey, how uh, you doing? No one really conversed a whole it's, it's lot. It's a creepy um, neighbor, man. And so, yeah, we were just a uh, creepy oh, hey, neighbor. Yeah. like, leave us alone. But, like, um, an, something that I had kind of thought of, too, was <clears throat> I didn't necessarily have a problem with so-called like straightforward deliberate theft of my games or like worrying about somebody breaking into my home but i definitely had a friend who wouldn't always return the game that he borrowed or that we swapped out for and i think that's another huge thing too that is you know kind of pre would prevent your friend from because you could give them access to the game but i do believe that if you once you go to log in it gives you it'll you could potentially have priority and like kind of on steam like boot them off the game so to speak. Um, so it kind of helps out with that. Like I had never really given much thought to like the whole theft thing because it is, those games are tied to your account. And if someone would take your system, like, yeah, you'd be out of system. But if once you saved up and got another one, those games would be back. Another thing too, is if like you were in a pinch, like you needed some money, like you could, you could wipe that console, sell it, and then if you got a new one, you'd have all your games back. You wouldn't potentially be able to sell your games for you could money, never but sell your, your games, yeah. But your games would be there if once you got Forever. your console back. You know what I mean? Like, that's a good thought. Like, you, you said, uh, what was the story you were telling Beastly about your apartment a little bit before the show? You talked about it had bars and just the the hilarious story of <laughs> someone trying to break okay, in. Okay, so. I, I didn't always live in a, in a great neighborhood. Brian knows the stories of my neighbors stabbing people outside my front door and shit that happened two years ago and just being in the hood, man. I, I had to go through my rites of passage in the hood. Uh, about 15 years ago, I lived in the heart of Atlanta and I lived in a really bad neighborhood. Um, and the, the uh, apartment I lived in had burglar bars on all the windows. And um, one day I came home from work and... Uh, my window was broken. The burglar bars were there. And there was like three sticks on the ground in my bedroom. And there was a long stick that someone had stuck through the window. And they were like dragging my video game, uh, my game uh, cases God. and my DVDs and everything they could toward that window. And, you know, I think they may have gotten three or four games, but it was a very hard process. Obviously. A game in itself. Yeah, like I commend thing. them. It's like I playing that claw game at the arcade. <laughs> the claw, yeah. I, I, at the same time, oh, like fuck. I commend them for their resourcefulness, but at the same time, it also stoops them to an entirely new low, new low. of like, you know what I mean? Well, like, what? <laughs> okay, look, I, did, I never told you guys this before, but back in, I think in 2003, there was a viral DVD that went viral around the, the country. It was called Crackheads Gone Wild. Uh, this DVD was filmed in the neighborhood that I lived in, uh, in Atlanta, the heart of Atlanta. And uh, there was a guy on the DVD. His name is Thero. He was the guy who actually tried to break into my, my apartment. Uh, he he knew, he was the cousin's the cousin of a coworker, and uh, this cousin introduced me to him. And the cousin was telling him, you know, this guy, yeah, he lives over there. He's got all the video games. It was PlayStation Two shit, you know, right when the PS3 was getting ready to come out. 
And I, w- I wanted to ask him, and, and I asked his cousin, I said, wasn't he in Crackheads Gone Wild? And he was like, yeah, that was him, but he didn't let people to know it. So it was a, a yeah, very famous crackhead. <laughs> I, I, I wanted yeah, to ask him. You know, I'm very coming back for reappearance. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, he, he was, he was 28. If you Googled Crackheads Gone Wild, anyone? No, just me. Well, Never mind. Give me five seconds. Trust me. It, it, the guy's name is Thero. If you watch it, he's 28 in the video. He's standing on the front porch. He's missing all his teeth. And it was him. It's like you see a person on TV and you recognize a face, especially one that's a crackhead face. You immediately recognize him. So I was like, that's fucking Thero. I wanted to shake his hand, but I didn't know if he had crack on it. And uh, so after his cousin introduced me to him, I, we were leaving. And I said, hey, man, wasn't your cousin on crackheads going wild? And he was like, yeah, he was, but he don't like nobody to bring it up. And so he had told his cousin where I live. If I had a friend who was on Crackheads Gone Wild, I would bring it up all the time. <laughs> I put that on like, my business yo, yo, card. You're due, for, you're due for, another, uh, for another season, yeah? Like, they asked you back. Like, you know, star role this time. Crackheads Gone Wilder. Yeah, no, I heard you're going to get a spot on the DVD the title original. screen. The very first one. They made a bunch of knockoffs. But I'm talking about the real, original, very first Crackheads yeah. Gone Wild. Not to be that confused was, with the, with the knockoff. <laughs> This is Rockhead real Ruckus. <laughs> Don't be confused with Rockhead <laughs> Ruckus. <laughs> you know, that cheap imitation bullshit. I, do you know what? I was waiting and anticipating where that story was going because you said it's something you never told us. There was a video film called Crackheads Gone Wild, and I was just – this was a confession coming out in the making, man, that just oh, never never went the way you were hoping. <laughs> That's All right, guys. Man. It's time to get oh, down to fucking God. business. It's time to debut a new – Hopefully reoccurring Seg- segment on the Revolver podcast. And it's called Revolver Decides. And this week, we're going to decide what the best console of all time was. There's some ground rules here. First, a decision must be unanimous among the cast. So we got four people here. We have to decide on one console, and we all have to agree on it. So are any this consoles week, not allowed? This week, there are no portable or handheld consoles allowed. So the Yobo, unfortunately, has been disqualified. Get I mean, it would be out. a surefire win if it wasn't disqualified. Oh, there would um, be no <laughs> questions. Also, the conversation does not end until Revolver decides. So we have to come to a conclusion. Conversation doesn't end. Basically, it's a war of attrition. Okay. <laughs> Let's so, do it. It's already cool. What's the past best console? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm at a disadvantage, I'm going to be honest. Gary, I think Gary's going to be pretty agreeable tonight. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go with the Yobo and just make Gary go. Yeah, fuck tonight. it, man. Yobo all the way. Yobo. Yobo. Basically, make your case. What's the best console of all time? You know, I'm a, I'm a PlayStation absolutist. Uh, but of the PlayStation consoles, my favorite would probably have been the PlayStation 2. Uh, PS1 was very close, but then again, I've really, I've had, this means so much to me. I spent so many hours playing my Super Nintendo as a kid. Pick one, really, Beasley! Damn it! <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to ride. I can't say 360. I didn't play it too much. I'm going to have to ride with Damn it, I'm looking at my consoles. I wanted to ride with the Super Nintendo, man. Super Nintendo. Why is it the Super Nintendo? Super Nintendo has a bevy of incredible games, some of the best, and, and still stand up to today. Uh, side-scroller, adventure games, Super Mario World, All-Stars, Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, Secret of Mana. Um, let me just look at the back of my Super Nintendo Mini. Mario World, Star Fox, Super Metroid. <laughs> It just had so many amazing experiences for me. Donkey Kong Country, these games meant a lot to me growing up. And, uh, you know, they still stand up today. Of course, they don't look like PlayStation 3 or 4 or Xbox, but for what they did for the time, it was an amazing experience. I can't say amazing. It was a great experience. I'm going to ride with with Super Nintendo. All right. Shake things up. I'm not going to go with PlayStation. Gary, what's the greatest console of all time? Can we throw a curveball and just say the personal computer? It's technically a console. God damn it's something, it, Gary. It's a de- it's a unit in your house that plays games. Granted, it does do some work applications, but predominantly it's always been a gaming machine. You know, right the way back from MS-DOS games through to what we've got now, it's ridden with every generation of console games that you've had. 
all the way but through. You it's been a constant. A console. So when you well, talk it, all this shit about console peasants, are you also referring to people who play PC as well? You're referring to yourself, <laughs> you fuck. Yeah, I mean, Don't you pull shades of gray with me, motherfucker. I will. Class of peasants. <laughs> like, you, know, you guys are on the, the straight white starch loaf. I'm on the gluten free kind of soya bean loaf. You know, it's kind of like the. the it's, we're all eating bread here, but we're on slightly, slightly different types of loaves. I feel but, like we Gary's really I mean, made this easy for us. PC, He's disqualified himself. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you can plug a controller into we'll it. We'll let the chat decide. Judge's ruling. Judge is ruling. You can emulate Chat. on it. You can play <laughs> PS4 on it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Wilson, they say it doesn't count, Gary. Wilson, what <laughs> oh, is the greatest console of all time? Um, hopefully, you guys can still hear me here. I think my internet's going out. No, I can we hear can you. hear you. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm getting a little choppy for you guys, though. Um, I guess when it comes to um, a deciding what the best console of all time is, I have to look at a few things. I got to look at durability. Like, will it break? I got to look at the list of games, longevity, third th third party support, and then overall technology. So I'm torn right now. I don't even know what Wilson's going to pick yet, and I'm already on board. <laughs> I'm, I'm, say 360. I'm torn because Super NES fits all of these. But the technology aspect of it like yes it was an advancement but ultimately i think prior you had said it last week perfectly it was a super nintendo it wasn't you know this um it was a better adaptation of what was successful before it um however the dreamcast in my opinion was way ahead of its time dude way ahead of its time there's people that are still doing mods to the dreamcast that are fucking mind blowing dude like the the power in the dreamcast is huge however it didn't have it had some third party support but it didn't have any longevity and you know like the games list eh, it could have been amazing you know, it really could it could have been amazing but it was ahead of its time 100% so with that being said, I guess I'm gonna have to go Super Nintendo, man. Yeah. You can have a little one, Wilson. You guys are all wrong. Thing. The obvious answer here is the Xbox 360. Now let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you a question, Wilson. How many Xbox 360s did you buy over the course of the life of the three? <laughs> With no joke, no bullshit. No joke. I would say at least seven. There you go. I mean, what <laughs> other console have you bought seven of? This is the clear winner, hands down. Uh, I mean, it's so valuable. It's so valuable that Wilson bought seven of them. Did you buy seven Nesses? No. no, sir, you did not. The you did not. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Technically, I I bought close to twenty of them when I collected because uh, oh. I pick them up at garage sales if they were Damn, cheap. If somebody's man. like, "Look, I will give you this objection." Entire... Leading the witness. <laughs> if someone was like, "Here's a Super Nintendo and a stack of games for a quarter and a Charms Blow Pop," I'm fitting yeah. to pounce. Damn, I'm fitting pop to, has to be pounce. Like, like, so I, in all seriousness, all right, the Xbox 360 definitely had some hardware issues, and yeah, I'm making fun of that, but. The thing that makes it the best console of all time for me is Xbox Live. They revolutionized online gaming for console players, period, bar none. PlayStation wasn't doing it. Nintendo wasn't doing it. Microsoft did it. They, they introduced wireless controllers, which was a big deal. They introduced hard drives for consoles. They did that in the previous generation, but it really came alive with the 360. The 360... Hardware wise had a real problem, but it changed game, changed gaming. And I think it's a, it's a huge deal. Also, it had some of the best games of all time. I mean, Call of Duty, Call of Duty 4 was unbelievable. Modern Warfare 2 was unbelievable. Halo 3 was unbelievable. Like, if you were a shooter fan for the last 10 years, Xbox 360 was the, the place to be. A place Oblivion was one of my favorite games. Oblivion. Uh, the fact I that mean, they made Oblivion work on the 360, I think, is still an unbelievable yeah. thing. It depends on what part of the world you live in, though. Because if you're in Japan, they don't have a fucking Xbox 360 years. I haven't <laughs> seen it. Right. They're also playing most of their games on mobile phones at this point. 
And they're also snapping panties. All right. Switch oh, so is Gary. Yeah, <laughs> bad. Okay, so I do like the snaps and panties. Revolver decides. So we're on completely different. And and to be totally transparent, I bought three Xbox 360s. See? Three. It was so valuable that you wanted three of them. No, one of them didn't work. <laughs> Objection. You didn't leave me. Shit. I had I bought two initially for myself and Kate. One of them got red ringed and I had to buy another one. Uh, and we ended up selling that one when uh, we fell in love with PlayStation uh, about a year or two later. But th- yeah, they did have a lot of, of great games, uh, yeah, great technology. Effect. Xbox Xbox Live really did push the envelope on, in online gaming and changed really the landscape of online playability. Uh, a little bit later, that that change was brought over to the PlayStation. But for me, the PlayStation games, you know, the PlayStation library has always meant more to me than the Xbox library. Uh, at the time where everybody was playing COD and all these other games, I really wasn't playing them. I was still into the kind of exclusive library aspect of it. But, but every every console generation has a library. You look at the SNES, it has an amazing library. PlayStation 2, <laughs> unbelievable library. PS3, unbelievable library. Xbox 360, gorgeous library. But the Xbox 360... Change the landscape of fucking gaming. Oh, he's trying to but like, he's trying I'm to lead look, all you guys. I'm, I'm looking at my <laughs> list, and it has the games list. It had the longevity because it was around for a very long time. Sure it was. had a lot of support for a long time. It had tons of third party support. For it sure, had tons of technological advance, but it didn't have any fucking durability, and that's something <laughs> that I can't get behind. I could put my fucking Super Nintendo. I could forget it in my jeans and put it through the fucking washer, <laughs> and that thing will fucking boot up. This just came right. out of the machine. I can't even <laughs> look at my Xbox 360 with that thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because I'm unattractive or whatever, but I can't even look at it without that thing taking a massive shit on my floor like a dog who's confused and felt like it did something the wrong. Xbox You're right, Wilson. Cool. You're right. You're right. But it was so fucking valuable that you went out and you bought another one anyway. Here's the it thing. Wasn't a cool yeah, console. Yeah, it, 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 right. it was shit. an unattractive console for one. Oh, I don't Which think so. I love that inhale shape. I actually think that was a really good At looking. At first, console. I liked it. Uh-oh. At first, I did like the shape. I was like, this is the fucking future. Did you see that button when I pressed it? It was all HD 1080p gaming? That IBM white, the off white cream color. It was so shit. It looked awful. Absolutely awful. I If I had to be pushed off of my. PC pedestal, and I had to side with a console, lowering myself to you guys' levels. I think there's a good case to be made that the PS4 is the greatest console of all time. I, I genuinely think there's a good case to, to be Go made. On, That's Gary, a really on. good argument. Unfortunately, Don't you wasted your vote the on the PC. Don't interrupt <laughs> Go on, Gary. Explain explain your, your perspective on this. Elevate a pitch in a minute. Right? With the PS4, it's outsold its competitor 10 to 1. And the Xbox One is a capable machine. It's a good machine. But people are flocking to the PS4. It is right. filling homes worldwide. We're talking Jap- Japanese market, European market, American market. People are taking it. They've taken what the Xbox 360 did with the online platform and revolutionized it again. What? How did they revolutionize yeah. with Xbox? With okay, Xbox One? remote. Remote play as standard, baked into every game. Share play as standard, built into everything. The fact you can stream straight from your console, which Xbox didn't have at mm, launch. Streaming the is whole a big deal. Mixer. Wasn't Are you there. sure you're not a console peasant, Gary? I'm starting to like <laughs> no, you again. Fundamentally, fundamentally, and the PlayStation 4, the library that it's got, both on the, the virtual console that it has, you know, the backward marketplace, as well as the, the games library on the PlayStation 4 is spectacular. It really is. If you want exclusives, that's the place to play them. I mean, if you look at the... The, the all-time best games on PS4, in my opinion, they would stand up in 50 years' time. They'll stand up next to Super Mario. You know, things that have, have come out on the PlayStation 4, in my opinion, would stand up to, to the games of Mario. Obviously, we're looking at them with rose-tinted glasses, but you look at things like... I'm going to call Last of Us Remastered, okay? OPS4 title. I know that's got BC on board there. That's totally cheating. Things- that is totally cheating. Right, that was a PS3 time. You guys talk about that 20 frames per second, that beautiful 20 frames per second beast, (laughs) Bloodborne. You've got right. I'm going to take Witcher 3 as being a generational thing. That's PlayStation, but it's also a this generation game. Grand Theft Auto 5, this generation game remaster, granted. Yeah, all All these these games, games, except for The Last of Us, are available on the Xbox One as well, though. They are, but they're also available on PlayStation 4. Yeah, I'm not going to count Horizon. Destiny. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know stuff like that? I don't, I don't know what that was. I I Irrelevant. I feel like we are, playing, we are playing a golden age of video games, and I feel like we don't appreciate it because we're in it at the moment. But I feel like every fucking game's a knockout. It used to be one or two tens a year. We seem to be getting like well, five, 2017 six, is fucking ridiculous. I there's yeah. there, there's more like nine out of ten games that you could possibly play this year. Every week, one's coming out, and people are like, must play game, must yeah. play game, must play game. Like, as and soon as we in- get off this podcast, I can't wait to go play Divinity Original Sin 2, because it's like getting 10 out of 10s everywhere. I want to pick it up. It's super expensive at the moment. Prices have like inflated everywhere at the moment. But there's so many good games coming out. I mean, that's definitely one of them, Divinity. But it, it feels like the generation that we're living in right now has more knockout games than the SNES had. You're looking at a machine that has had its entire life cycle and cherry picking the 30 best titles from it or 50 best titles from it. We're getting 50 amazing titles every single year. I, I just, I don't know. I He's feel like we're looking piece. at it roast tinted. He has, a, he has a very I, valid point there. I um, was, okay, here's the deal. <clears throat> the wind's blowing hard here and I, I'm just a feather because I'm all over the place. You guys are fucking with me. All right. I was on, I, I was starting to get on board with Briar with this 360 thing, but you know what? Fuck 360. I can't put it in my washing machine. 360 so, is. Nope. It's out. It's out. It's I can't out, put it in Brian. my washing machine. It's out. It's here. Out. On the other hand, I need to, I need to verify something before I make my decision. Will you say Sony? Just say Sony. Sony. I'm convinced. PlayStation 4, the greatest console of all time. <laughs> I do not board. agree! <laughs> I do not agree! What, what do you object to? The PlayStation got- 4 is an awesome console, right? I don't really have any complaints about it. Exactly. I even really enjoy my PlayStation 4. Bro, but, but, I just think the Xbox 360, it revolutionized gaming with Xbox Live. I think Xbox Live okay. is a fucking huge deal it changed i hear you the scope of what video game playing is i agree and you make a good point the model t changed the way transportation was done but it's not the fucking best car ever it is but it changed the way that transportation was was done and gary don't you don't you name off some british bullshit car that you think is better than ours all right before we go any further all right if if you had a choice between the car you're driving or you could drive around a model t for the rest of the year Fucking know in my heart you choose that Model T for the rest You're of the year. You're so convincing. I don't know <laughs> myself anymore. You guys just... I just... To be honest, I'd, I'd drive any other car than mine at the moment because I drive it into the back of a cement truck and it's not looking good at the moment. <laughs> if I take that Model T, as long as it doesn't have a dented bonnet, it, I'd, be, I'd be happy. You gotta stop playing the Vita while you're driving, man. That's just yeah. bad news. You're playing GT Gran Turismo? Yeah, your car isn't just... remote play, bruh. Like... Doing IRL snapping panties. That was just the problem. Yeah. People well, are looking over in the car. What's he doing? Oh, no, guys, snapping panties or some shit. Like, what it look like? Well, look. This, this is how I'll destroy Briar's argument and end that aspect of the conversation. The internet alone is different from a video game console. Of course, the Xbox 360 revolutionized Xbox Live when we take into effect the internet. But there will come a time in the future when the Xbox Live on the Xbox 360 probably won't even be active anymore as console generations move forward. I don't think that using that as an argument to say that's the best console of all time is a valid one when you look at I've got another one. i got another argument. I've been saving this one in my back pocket. Oh, no. It's also got the best controller in the history of console gaming. That's objective. No. It is objective. It is objectively true. (laughs) Again, it depends. Right, with your big old bunch of banana hands, maybe. But my small, delicate, childlike hands work so much better on like these other control, the Xbox One controller, which granted is not in the game here, that for me, you've said that feels like a torture device and it isn't comfortable. This perfectly fits my dwarf-like fingers. I it's, love the Xbox amazing. One controller. I, I absolutely love the Xbox One controller. The Xbox have- One controller is a worse version of the Xbox 360 controller. Improvement. It is not an improvement. I'm going to ride with Gary. He sided with me on PlayStation. <laughs> It's way better than the 360. Specifically, the wired version of the Xbox 360 controller, I think it's one of the most comfortable controllers ever made, and it functionally does everything modern controllers does. Too. I think it's one of the best. I think it's the best controller ever made. The X, the wired Xbox 360 controller. I think uh, Sony really, 
really innovated with the DualShock controller with the PlayStation 1. And then the Xbox 360 controller kind of perfected that form. I'm going to be reading the comments from you guys down in our Fuck, Twitch Scuff, chat. Scuff is now making it for the PlayStation 4. Like they're basically, Let me know. They made the Scuff Impact. Uh, and it's basically just a, it's an Xbox 360 controller for the PlayStation 4. Yeah. It's an Xbox uh, One controller. <laughs> B, B, B Kirk said the Nintendo 64 controller was the best controller. Damn, I couldn't even get through that sentence. Yeah, that's because it's goddamn ridiculous. That controller no. was... You guys let us know in the comments what you think the best console of all time was. And I would we got to decide. This conversation does not Look, end until you we can decide. get a Zim 4 and you can use an Xbox 360 controller on your PS4. How's that? Well, in regards to the N64 controller, I didn't know whether to play video games with it or pl try to pleasure myself or someone with it. Both. Damn. The correct answer is both At of the those same things. Time. The correct answer. <laughs> correct Inter answer Inter is Black both. Ninja, who may be on the show next week, hopefully we can get him uh, to. Uh, Stand in for our, our brother Wilson said the Switch Pro controller is the best controller ever. I've never played with that before. Which Pro controller. controller is a damn good controller? Wow, it is He's a damn good, good controller. Someone said the Wii Mote 80 you know, fucking dollars, though. Damn. <laughs> I mean, they're all inferior to a mouse and keyboard, but I mean, if I had to, to sully my hands with a controller, I don't think the Xbox 360 one's the one I'd go for. I honestly feel like I've played more games on the PlayStation 4 controller than I have. The three. Well, I don't even own a 360 controller. It's not my bag. PlayStation Four so controller is good, but the raw ability, ability is terrible. Well. Uh, if I had to choose one, if you held a gun to my head, it'd be the um, Xbox One controller. Okay. But that's Ew. just Ew. convenient. It fits my tiny, freakish hands. I, my fingers are not long enough to work effectively on a PlayStation Four controller. Right? If I hold this up here, my, my finger just does not reach all the way over that shoulder button. Look at it, struggling. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> I will say yeah. that this was the controller, the very controller there it is. that I used there it is. to slay those elitists on the Destiny 2 PC page. Just Ooh, look at it. All of its it, it, still has, it still has a bit of salt on it from <laughs> those keyboards. They'll kick an ass after all I these should, years. Best I should, controller I should ever. clean this. Hashtag best ever. Goat. <laughs> I do. I, I, I gotta get with behind you on the controller, dude, but I cannot, like, the fucking horrendous times that I was in the middle of a game and that shit red ringed on me or the countless amounts that I had to repair that I had to like reflow the motherboards or like put new thermal paste over the processors and stuff. And like, I, I just can't get behind that it, in the between Xbox 360 and not even PS4, but PS3, like I had one PS3 to the seven, eight, 360s that I bought. And granted, yes, I did have to reflow the motherboard on that one too, but it stayed good for the longest time. Like, I'm pretty sure it might even still work if I dug it out, but I don't know, man. Like, I just, it just burned my ass so bad with yeah. that red, with you, that red ring of death, replace, man. You know, when you have to replace a, a console numerous times, you know, doing the towel trick or uh, doing thermal paste, it can make you look at the console a little bit differently. Um, yeah, and I mean, also, if you go with the 360, you're supporting the work of Don Matrick. Fucking Fuck Don dude. Matrick. <laughs> no, Zumba, was, bitch. Don Matrick, no, it wasn't. Don Matrick came in halfway through the Xbox 360. He fucked it up. And he fucked it into the ground yeah, with no loop. Xbox One is Don Matrick's baby. It was. It, it, All right, don't have I can, I can read the tenor of the room. I, I knew it was a long shot to get Beastly to ever agree to a Microsoft product. Hey, man, I'm that was a Nintendo. fucking long shot to I'm begin with. I'm Nintendo, and Gary made, you know what? <laughs> Gary made a fact-based, intelligent argument, and he swayed me in his direction under duress. I'm going to go with Gary and say that the, the PlayStation, I can't even say this, <laughs> PlayStation 4 is the greatest console of all I time. think that's ridiculous. I, I it just doesn't have the library compared to some of the older consoles. It also hasn't been like it's how, how many years has it been into has it because like what the 360 was how many years? Eight? Eleven? How nine. many years was that thing out? Nine, nine. years? Nine, PlayStation yeah. 4 hasn't been out for nine years, has it? It's four four years. Three. Four. Yeah. Three or four, yeah. In so if you look at it in that aspect, like I, I totally hear what you're saying, but like I'm gonna have to agree with Gary because he made I, I just I agree with Gary. I can't get behind the red ring of death. And also, Gary did not make fun of America and use words like fat fucking donut fingers. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wilson, you've convinced hand. me. <laughs> Gary's restraint 
has pulled me in. <laughs> yes. Once again, Gary has fucking controlled the entire cast. <laughs> I will say, Briar, though, you did it. You, you were, you and Gary were pulling me back and forth across the line there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you did. And see, I just, I just he started out. He started looking. out with me. Wilson started out. We can't with me see the wood for the cool. trees, man. We are living in a golden age of gaming, and that's all I'm saying is we we are. 50% of the console life cycle we've had. My biggest problem, though, is that... Such good games. Like We're talking about four years of games as opposed to ten years of games on other consoles. There's so, such a broad library on other consoles. Yeah, but I feel like we're, we're being um, forward-sighted, let's say, to think that... Imagine in five years' time what broad library we're going to have on the PS4, and we've already got this front-end library. You've got what PSVR, if the PS5 got- comes out in 2019? Fuck that, man. It's not coming out 2019. Beastly was wrong. Hashtag. It's coming out 2020. <laughs> Hashtag well, Beastly was wrong. Let's see that yep. one spread across the internet. Get it trending, guys. <laughs> if you're on Twitter, put hashtag Beastly was wrong with everything. If you're snapping pictures of your food, hashtag Beastly was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I love you all. Fuck these guys. So look, check hashtag this out. Beastly was wrong. Beastly was wrong. Wrong. <laughs> This is just 2017. I'm not going to go through the gamut, but Gravity Rush 2, Tales of Basiria, Yakuza 0, Neo, Horizon Zero Dawn, Nier Automata, Persona 5, Dragon Quest Heroes 2, Nino Kuni 2, uh, Death's Gambit, Hellblade, Sinoa's uh, Sacrifice, which is incredible, Next Machina, Death Machine, Pyre, uh, Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. Come on, Briar. You can't fuck with that. That's just 2017. Shit. Come on. You're going to put that up against all the games on the Super Nintendo or all the games on the PlayStation 2? PlayStation 2 probably has one of the greatest libraries of all the consoles. And I'm surprised that nobody's really fighting for the PlayStation 2 because I think there's a very good argument that could be made for that console. PS2 was was honestly my... It was right there with me with the Super Nintendo. Um, But, you know, for me... The fun that I had, I went with the Super Nintendo because that's probably where the most of my memories, my fond memories of gaming are. Uh, But yeah, PlayStation 2 had an amazing uh, catalog. And I'm not talking about all of PS4's catalog either. I'm just talking about 2017. And who knows what's going to be, you know, coming in the future. So maybe at the end of this life cycle when Revolver Live is at episode 300 and we're on PS5 and Xbox One XYZ. Um, I, I just, just, just for fun, I just Google searched the best Xbox 360 games, just for fun. You know, I've given up this, but Red Dead Redemption, have you though? Grand Theft Auto Five, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Four, Skyrim, Bioshock, Bioshock Two, Bioshock Infinite, Halo Three, Fallout Three, Portal Two, L.A. Noir, Halo Reach, Mass Effect Two, Gears of War, Gears of War Two, Gears of War Three, Batman, Arkham. Arkham City, Arkham Asylum. Only named four exclusives so far. Call of Duty, Fable Two, <laughs> Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I mean, this guy Left for Dead. Left, left for Dead. Dude, but all those games are on that console. It could yeah, games. Well, yeah, they they're amazing games. games. Borderlands, as well. Borderlands Two. Not all those games are on on. Right. On PS4. Yes, they are. Collection. Yes, they are. Not. Those, name one that's not on PS4. Uh, Bioshock. Halo. Halo. Bioshock is. You've got the what are you talking HD about? collection. What's in that Grand Bioshock. Theft Auto 4. Red Dead Redemption. Portal 2. Red Dead Redemption on the, They're all on, on the PS3. Console. You said PS4. You keep changing the fucking target, Beasley. I'm moving the goalposts. <laughs> you know Xbox. Look. Xbox you just said PS4. I meant PS3. Every game you mentioned besides Halo and Gears of War was on PS3. So yeah, you, but you nobody's use... fighting for the PS3. Yeah, but well, I'm fighting for the fight. Xbox 360. You can't, you can't stuff, use multi. I'm not comparing. I'm not comparing the the Xbox 360 to the PS3. I'm comparing it to the X, the PS4 and the SNES, the other two consoles that are being argued for. Here. I'm just saying, if you, if you talk seat. about a, a library of games, the Xbox 360 has a fantastic library of games. I think a I lot can't of get behind the PlayStation 2 because I had a lot of disc error. I had a lot of hardware issues with my PS2 um, until the super slim flip top one came out. You know, it's probably because it was in our basement and it was dark and damp and we were like burning incense and it was dusty. Oh, you were burning. And, you know, burning other, <laughs> other things. Um, you know, my God. <laughs> you saying my PlayStation 2 was stoned? Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> 
Hey, uh, hey you said <laughs> that to me. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I rest my How much of that? Remember that screensaver on the PlayStation 2? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you didn't that. even need it to work. It right? In the day. <laughs> Man, just reset. 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 Oh, my goodness. All right. You make a good argument, Briar. Um, but for me, for a console like that that has a competitor with the same games, that kind of takes away from the uh, the magic of that particular console. But well, we're not comparing it to the PS3. We're comparing it to the PS4. Uh, Dead Space, think... the orange box. And all I'm hearing is a lot of conjecture and salt here. We've already lost. Fallout so... New Vegas. He talking to you, bro. We had him. What the fuck, Google? You brought him back in. Street Fighter 4. We had him. Google, Destiny. Bro. Destiny. <laughs> that dead game. All right. I'll just to end the conversation, you know, before Tuesday. <laughs> I guess I'll go with the PS4. I think it's fucking a crackpot <laughs> choice, though. <laughs> is this to be is this technically to be continued? Because I don't no. want to end it if you're if you're truly not. This is breaking the rules. That you have to be convinced. Yeah, Briar. I, I mean, you're not going to convince me. I will unanimous, unanimously agree that the PlayStation 4 is the best console of all time. I think it's fucking horseshit. But I'll minute. say it. The words will come out of my mouth. I think this was botched from the beginning. I think we should have said a console whose best console whose life cycle is over because we could oh, potentially we still have a lot to come from the PlayStation. Yeah, PS4 could. I'm not saying continue the conversation. I'm just saying for future reference, we might need to lay down a few more guidelines here Brown because rules. comparing PS4 to we had, we can only compare what we know of PS4 now. Yeah, we can't predict what they're gonna do or what could potentially knock us on our ass in the future or comparing... piss us off or piss us PC. off. You know what's not on the PS4? Any Mario games. Any Nintendo games. You guys gave up the that's so quick. You're so quick to abandon it. So quick. Look. Makes me sad. A, Wilson, me I sad. agree with you. It's like I'm, comparing a person who just died at 81 to a newborn baby. You know, you don't know what the baby's going to do. Are they going to become the president, a serial killer? You don't fucking know. And so at that, both. you know, when you take that into account, both, yeah. <laughs> presidential serial killer. It's a new show. Dexter's Dude, oh, man. Both. I'm tuning into that. <laughs> I don't know. I think we, we need to stop living in the past, man. Them games are done. They're gone. Let's rid the nostalgia, brush off the cobwebs. Hey, they man. were good games. Nostalgia's you know, you mentioned big, things like. Gary. It's a big thing. You People say Skyrim, we've had a legendary edition. You say GTA 4, we've had GTA 5. You say Bioshock, we've had the remaster. All them games are being played again with better graphics. Let's yeah. just leave the past where it lies and move on Fuck to the, the PC. Past is what he's saying, uh, yes. Briar. That Xbox 360 bullshit. I knew PS4 was going to win. I knew it the whole fucking time. That's why I said Super Nintendo. I was just waiting for it to come around. Good luck, <laughs> Gary. God damn it. Where's my PlayStation shirt? Get it in here. <laughs> I think it's Ryder time to move on. Not look convinced. He looks <laughs> we need to move on. <laughs> and Ryder the fact, like I, I would Crawling. much rather like if we had landed on the SNES. I feel like a strong argument could have been made for the SNES, but a PlayStation Four that's four years old. You're going to give that the greatest of all time title. This that is lunacy. The same. That is lunacy. I reckon Beastie's the type of guy that would make this statement for the PS4 being the greatest of all time and Mayweather being the greatest boxer of all time as well. No, no, I, I can't stand Floyd Mayweather. Uh, you can't. That's no. like hanging I, like the goat age. badge on Brady after his first Super Bowl win. Or, you know, it's like, it, it, it's it's premature. You can't, you can't start talking about greatest of all time before it's done. Listen, Briar, it seems like this conversation is a little ahead of your time. I don't think you're ready for this conversation. I think you created a, a topic that your mind wasn't ready for. And unfortunately, <laughs> you haven't taken into account that Gary's the smartest guy you know. After all, you spent untold thousands of dollars because of this man. He's convinced you to buy VR headsets and upgrading PCs. You follow his lead. And this is what's been going on for the last fucking two years. So just continue to follow. He said PS4 wins. Just accept it. I have okay. to settle for PS4. No, I'm not going PS4. Fuck it. I'm not doing it. I will not <laughs> do PS4. It's fucking craziness. <laughs> I'm going back to PC and eliminating myself from this fucking conversation. You guys sort it out. I I'm going with PC. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? 
I, I go, I'm not going with a current gen console. That's craziness. You got PCs the current SNES. Gen console. Yeah, SNES. All right, I'll go with PCs the SNES then. I, I will I will rally against the about with the SNES. But the PS4, that's fucking crazy. How can you say it's hey, man, PS4? You know, you know what? I was just kidding about everything I said. I knew the Super Nintendo was gonna win. That's why I had two of them right here. <laughs> Look, Super Nintendo. <laughs> Greatest console of all fucking time. You got Chrono Trigger. Look at Inter Black Ninja is just listing off amazing games. It's the console so good they released it again this year. Yeah. This year. Like okay. they did the Nintendo last year. Super Metroid. I yeah. Don't even, I don't even know myself anymore. You got Bro, Super Mario All Stars. What did you just do here? I feel like I, I need to go and, and lie down after this topic. Now I'm not fighting for a cause. I'm fighting against one. <laughs> <laughs> He's fucking the man. That's it. <laughs> I told you, man. I'd, I'd say PC, so I'm taking myself out of the running. For me, all of them are equally inferior. So pick one from the inferior <laughs> pile. It's good and to let's be back, Gary. Get the fuck out of here. This may have been a tough one to lead with with this reoccurring topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. All right. All right, so... What are we going to agree to as as an entity, as Snest. a business? I, f- I feel like I feel like you guys have let Gary see it in your mind this awfulness that is the place you for. Great points. <laughs> uh, he didn't make great points. He did. He made great points, and, and his points were valid and fact based and logic based. No, were mine. Uh, <laughs> there's a bullshit. Place. It boils down to me with, I, I guess, I gotta hit, see. It, I'm torn again because I'm like, oh well, playtime will settle this this difference in my mind, and I've probably played the two equally, man. Uh, like between what the 360? Super Nintendo and PlayStation. Oh, well, when you take into account that the Xbox 360 was red ringing uh, people within the, I'm first off the 360. I understand. I'm never gonna win the 360. God. Just I'm let me off just the say 360. <laughs> It, it was red ringing people within the first 12 months and, and Microsoft was trying to help people within that first year, but it continued to domino and snowball effect. How many PS4s have, you know, shit it crapped out on people? I've had two die. Years? Oh, PS4s? I've had one die. I haven't had any die. They're all alive and kicking. And well, you're enjoy- not a hardcore gamer like I am. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you see... The PS4 burns out with the amount of skill that the player is using in the game. You see, Briar exerts a high level of skill. And he's just he gra- burning through content. He goes together. Super Saiyan when he grabs the control. Ah! Is it really, you really hardcore, Briar? I'm sorry. I you gotta- know what it never has broken on me? A Super Nintendo. Never had one break. Yeah, mine either. That's the thing. I haven't had a PlayStation break yet either. Mine sounds like shit when I turn it on. It sounds, it there, it sounds yeah. like a pleasure device. <laughs> mine Can't sounds worse than that. It's turned more yellow than like the the ceiling of a coffee shop with a bunch of smokers in it. Yeah, you well, you know it? that's why it's because of the fat fucking donut fingers. Like Gary <laughs> said, he solved the Gary riddle, man. It's too much. Fruit. It's too much grease and freedom that makes <laughs> that color. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not grease. It's freedom sauce. <laughs> yeah, oh, we should make something called freedom sauce. I like that. My yellow is still though. kicking too. I, I wish I could have included this, but I would have had to fight oh with Gary God. over the PS Vita. We would have had to yeah, fight. Yeah, how many Super Nintendo adaptations have there been compared? Is there a knockoff PlayStation 4? Have we seen the equivalent? Because, you know, there's always like a. I've seen a Chinese knockoff Wii. I've seen I've a seen Chinese the, the knockoff, knockoff Wii PSVs. U. Yeah, yeah but I've have seen... we seen a knockoff? P- has it gotten to, to the point where it's gotten to official bite status where they gotta ah, they got to take a bite out of it and be like, we're going to make the. The SP4, just so it. Have you noticed that they try to label it so that it does fuck with unsuspecting customers, yep. like some of these knockoffs, like the Wii yeah. with with two, with three eyes in it? And I think so, it was one called the Will, but yeah, the the L was lowercase, so you just couldn't tell. I have to check that out. The, right, uh, so- <laughs> what are we gonna settle on, guys? Because even if I sway Super Nintendo for sake of the conversation, we're not gonna sway Gary. No, Gary, I think Gary's Gary easy to be swayed. Gary, yeah, Gary, Super Nintendo okay with you? Whatever the fuck you want, man. See? I'm, I'm <laughs> Gary, let's lay this to rest. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo is Revolver Live's best console <laughs> of all time. We will rehash this Fucking conversation. Great. After the life cycle of the eighth generation consoles, just to see how things went when we're all old and gray. Everyone besides Gary, because he'll probably never go gray. 
That's I true. just live off the salt of. Are you saying he's gonna die an early death? That's fucked up, beastly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's not exactly what I meant, but yeah, sure. I meant that he was gonna maintain that sweet little baby face forever. His son's There's gonna grow to the age he is now, and they're both gonna be on the same Monday. age. Man, I right. feel like we were like walked right up to the ledge of the cliff, and we're like, "Oh, let's all do a suicide pact and jump together," and then we're like, "Whoa." <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> let's just, Cooler heads prevailed. I think we're better off now. Let, let's not drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> you know let's what? put the cup down. I heard this John Joe guy makes really Jones shitty Kool-Aid. <laughs> so, Gary, cheers. he said you tried to fucking suicide bomb the cast, man. I was with you, Gary. I was with I'd, you. I'd have happily drank the Kool-Aid to be in, a, in a bed, You sniffed a the, the faintest scent of a PlayStation winning. You jumped on board like crazy. You're like you're a full bandwagon on that PlayStation train, Beastly. <laughs> I only went to it out you're of You're like default. cannonball, motherfuckers! <laughs> you guys are just so convincing, man. You guys are like peer pressure, like just try it once, man. Everybody's doing it. Look, man, Beastly was all about Super Nintendo. Now he's all into PlayStation, man. PlayStation. Shit. Yeah, and then I come over and Beastly's like, oh, I don't do PlayStation no more, man. I'm all about Super Nintendo. I felt juked. <laughs> we need to move on. All right, let's move on. <laughs> man, I don't fuck with any of you. <laughs> we love you, Gary. We on our agenda, All right. education, which you guys obviously need in the the, the best console, but doesn't matter. We've left that behind. Um, why aren't there more games that focus, or the more games that use um, themselves as a as a medium for education? And this actually came up this week. There's a game in the Steam sale, seven dollars. Buy it absolutely buy if you've got kids or just yourself that in that want to get better at typing pick up a game called epistory or epi story or epistory i don't know how to pronounce it but whatever i'll type it in the chat it's a game that's like um paper art game looks like origami little girl riding a fox around you kind of control it as a free form arpg but you solve riddles in the game by typing what comes up on the screen. It's almost like typing of the dead. Have you ever played a game like that? Do you remember the House yeah. of the Dead game? But the developers have designed it as a game first and a typing adventure second. Man, I am so addicted to this game. It is amazing. The soundtrack, the visuals, everything about it. It's like playing Journey for the first time. Remember playing Journey? Mm-hmm. Kind of that experience, that journey, that 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 walk. And it got me thinking, you know, games like Sinua's Sacrifice Hellblade really educated me on what mental health problems could manifest as. Minecraft itself, probably one of the biggest games of our generation, at least, it is effectively a creative arts tool. You know, it's not really a game, at least it, it wasn't. Well, we've lost someone. He's gone off to download Epistory, so we've lost yep. Casey. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'm out. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm is going that? to play my Fuck you, PlayStation 4 haters. <laughs> no. The question was, why don't, we, why don't we see more of it? And then the second question was, what have you learnt from a game because I know that I've learned a lot more about upskirt Japanese schoolgirl photography from Galgun. Uh, I feel like I'm an expert at it now in, in my day to day life. So, what's your guys' thoughts on those two topics? I'm really interested to hear. I'm really glad you brought up Minecraft because I think creativity is a form of education that is not necessarily not encouraged as much as it should be, but I don't think it's as openly accessible. To young people as it should be sure you have your art classes and things like that but i think creativity is a huge learning tool huge and that's what i think minecraft did perfectly um unfortunately like when it comes to educational games i you know you had brought up uh hellblade you know that blew my mind like it's not always like a direct education like this is what we're teaching you it's not like what did i had bring up earlier was it donkey kong jr math you know, where you're literally adding, you know, two plus three and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man, like it's there, I, I think there's a lot to be said about games with an indirect educational message. And I think you nailed it with Hellblade right there. Like it's not necessarily like, hey, we made this game to potentially teach you about mental illness. But that's just kind of the way it came out. So I don't know. That's a. That's a very, very uh, that's a tough question, man. Uh, just real quick note, I do realize the cams are messed up. As soon as Beastly comes in, it'll kind of fix itself. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you think, Brian? <laughs> I mean, do you do you see it as an, a powerful the platform? Is, you the, loved Hellblade. Yeah, I did. I absolutely did. Um, but it certainly wasn't marketed as a educational game, and I think that's really the right. uh, why you don't see as many of them. Right? Is that 
as soon as you market a game as an educational game, you can expect like zero sales on that game, right? Yeah. But why though? Because parents want to buy games for their kids, right? And kids yeah. just want free games. Yeah. So if you could get, they, no they don't games, want they don't want educational games. No, like if my mom would have came home from Blockbuster and been like, I got you know Sesame Street, you know, f- or uh, no, I'm sorry, um, Mario Fun with letters for Super Nintendo, <clears throat> I'd have been like, could we go back to? blockbuster and get something else like kids just don't want to play it like briar said you attach the stigma of educational to it and kids want action they want kids have a short attention span you spend all day at school last thing you want to do is come home and spend your free time playing an educational video game part of that is probably the stigma of the educational video games not being that good because it wasn't always that way when i was a kid carmen san diego was really popular um oregon trail was really popular oh uh, How many time, times did you die of dysentery? Vet many times. Many yeah. times. Do you guys remember yeah. Sticky Bear for the Apple II? Do you remember Sticky Bear? I remember no? him and Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop, Dogg, Snoop Dogg played him in the remake, I think. Yeah. It was, oh, yeah, that was Huggy Bear. My bad. <laughs> I would. I would like to see. Okay. 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 No, I'm starting to see the the bigger picture of your question here. I would like to see a game. That inadvertently, because, and I'm going to pull the Hellblade thing here. Hellblade inadvertently educates you about mental illness. You don't necessarily know you're going into it and you're going to have a better understanding of this. I would maybe like to see a game that would kind of maybe touch on, God, I probably shouldn't even say this, but like... Racial equality, for lack of a better term, you know what I mean? Maybe, like, something that would address the poverty situation here, you know, throughout parts of the United States. Something that is still fun to play, but at the same time kind of makes you take a step back and appreciate what you do have and the fact that you are playing the video game. Like, I don't know, maybe that's too cheesy, but, like, there definitely Mm -hmm. needs to be more... A way to bring things to people's attention that can interest them. Like, Hellblade, like, I'm... I'm not going to Google many things about mental illness unless it, you know, unfortunately directly affects me or if I meet someone and I'm like, I felt very stupid or very insensitive and I need to educate myself where as like a game like Hellblade, you play it and you walk away with a whole new understanding and a whole new respect for those going through that kind of stuff. And I don't know how you do poverty, racial equality, things like that in a video game. I don't know. That's not for me to decide, but I'd like to see more things like I'd like to see more games that give you that good, that good feeling that <clears throat> potentially makes you want to be a better person when you go outside. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's I, the reason I brought it up is literally this one game, um, Epistory or Epistory that that really got. I put a link to it in the chat as well, and I put the, the title in. Check it out. It it to me, it's it's labelled as an, an educational game. It's labelled as a typing coach, but it is a game first and foremost, as I said. And I think if the educational games can be good, it's a massive fertile market, you know, that, that's just untapped. You know, you, you said, uh, bro, I used to have games like that. Like you had things like the Zambinis and Carmen San Diego and all them sort of sorts of things that were games based around learning. Um, if it's teaching you a skill, but doing so in an interesting way, in a way that that you want to come back to and you want to play. I mean, surely that's a good thing. You know, we don't have any of them out there anymore, at least not from double and triple a developers hellblade to me was one of the first and i, I stumbled on the, upon this epistory in a steam sale and it's just really rung out to me and thought shit there's a market for this because i'm playing it with you know I, I do want to improve my typing yeah but that's you know for me i'm playing it because it's a fucking great story you know it's a, a girl riding out a a, a fox it's like a, a a god fox and finding why a meteor has come and like corrupted the lands around her and finding out all the um the you know, the hidden mysteries of controlling the elements and it's a real wrapped game around it. So I don't know. I just, I, I wonder how many other people would potentially go out there and try a game that was going to teach them something, but also going to be enjoyable and fun. I think all games in a sense have the ability to teach you something <clears throat> like you just might not realize it because you're playing a game. Like some games cater to my bad habits, whether it be impulsiveness, like, Spending all, if I would have spent all my legendary marks before Zer came, which like I'm not, don't really have a problem with those now, but like teaching you like restraint to wait, like saving up for something, um, hand eye coordination, um, patience, problem solving. I think it's a lot of things that 
all games can potentially like that's just the broad spectrum of games like it's not i guess it's not necessarily educational that's more of like a, a skill builder you know what i mean but unfortunately man like you look like i think they have to do it to make a like a, a very popular quote-unquote educational game they have to do it inadvertently and secretively like you can't you can't label it an educational game nowadays and like people just immediately dismiss it and it's pushed off to the side it's just another you know whatever game i'm gonna have to check this game out that you're talking about especially yeah, if it's man. cheap because it might completely change my perspective on this but six dollars seventy it will make you a better typist and you'll enjoy the fuck out of the game it's really really good i'm, I'm a it, terrible it's typist. only yeah get it man it's really it's got adaptive difficulty so the game gets harder or easier based on how many words per minute you type so it's kind of always adjust your difficulty so as you start to get better as a typist the game makes the, you know it more challenging you know and it's it's as i said it's immersive you're walking through the forest and if you have to set fire to something there'll be words like that will appear on it like combustion ignite flammable thing you know things that actually suit the mood of it you're walking through and if there's frost it'll be like you know frigid pale um you know foreboding all, all stuff that's i don't know again i can't evangelize enough on this game check it out it's that said, it's only going to be, I think, $6.70 for the next 24 hours. So I know on I'm Steam. selling another thing on Steam. I've put the link in the chat, um, Typing Chronicles. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like a educational game. It looks to me like a really cool indie uh, origami art title. But the whole game, um, imagine like a, an isometric ARPG, and the tiles of the map open up like pages of a story that are wrapped up out of coloured paper. Really, really beautiful. And the soundtrack spot on. All narrated, very similar to Bastion in the way you've got a narrator talking you through it, a child's a child's fairy tale about a meteor that came down to Earth and wiped out a load of, uh, you know, brought corruption and wiped out a lot of the uh, tranquility of nature. Yeah, really good, really good game. Um, Once again, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Told me another thing. <laughs> Six dollars seventy. I'm getting uh, cheaper. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a lot cheaper than the uh, than the Oculus and the Vive. <laughs> Which we've had an update to Google Earth, man, and it's fucking great. If you've not been on Google Earth VR lately, check it out. They put on the Street, Street View, on View it. yeah. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Um, we have one more topic, but I don't want to do it without Beastly, guys. It's uh, the, the topic is, if every job paid $100,000 a year, what job would you pick for the guy clockwise to you? So, for instance, I would be choosing Beastly's job. Beastly would be choosing Wilson's job. Wilson would choose Gary's job, and Gary would choose my job. Um, but I don't want to do it without Beastly, and uh, we've done two hours, so why don't we wrap it up, and we'll couch that one for next week. Does that sound okay? Absolutely, yeah. We can, we can get people in the comments actually tell us what job they think we should do as well. That's that's a great one. I think that's a good idea, actually. Give us some good ideas for next week, and homework <laughs> for everyone. If you've, and again, I've plugged this the shit out of it, I'm going to plug it one more time, Zin, as we're wrapping early. I've put a link in the Steam chat for Epistory Typing Chronicles. If you want to learn to type better and you want a great game or you have children in your household that you want to get into typing because it's a great life skill, pick this game up. You won't regret it. It's something that I think everyone will enjoy. And if you like beautiful things but hate yourself, check out Cuphead. Oh, don't. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. That was beautiful. That was awesome. You like beautiful things and want to hate yourself. Check out Cuphead. It'll do both. Uh, Gary, where can people find the podcast? People can find the podcast on iTunes. They can also find it on Podbean. Unfortunately, because of American colonial imperialism, I can't load it onto Google Play. And none of you two American compatriots have offered to do it for me. So fuck you. Um, yeah, they can they can pick it up on those two places, iTunes or Podbean, Revolver Live. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kind of fucking with you. We're like, and? Littering and? Yeah, I mean, that's about it. You can also watch it live on this Twitch channel. If you're watching it right now, um, then you know where to find it. If you're not, twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit, where you can watch us at six o'clock eastern every sunday um where we have unedited mistakes like that where random members will disconnect we'll just have cats appear and jump into subwoofers it's a, a really organized professional top quality experience i think that's so really what we out. shoot for right it's just the utmost of professionalism all the time yeah we're like, like cats crackheads gone wild the podcast <laughs>
Guys, yeah, this was a really fun show. Like, I really, I actually really had fun during the uh, console debate. I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was good times. I can understand okay. why Beastly left. He was just so yeah. upset that the PlayStation 4 left. He just decided. I, I'd be surprised if he comes back on next week. Yeah. Maybe the last time honest, we ever I, see him. I yeah. almost, almost had fun this week. I came really close to having fun. So next week, let's <laughs> let's really let's try just, and push it all up the rest of the way. You know what my guess is? In all honesty, I'm starting to think that Beastly is plugging in that network cable, but he's still on Wi-Fi. Like the he's not switching over to the NIC. He's actually still on Wi-Fi. So Can we get a show. second hashtag Beastly was wrong? Yes, with hashtag Beastly hashtag. was wrong. I'd like to see that all week on Twitter. Hashtag yeah. Beastly was wrong. If you've got something that has upset you, or if you think it's something hilarious, just throw the hashtag Beastly was wrong. And if you tag him on it, I think it'd be even better. The more yeah, he sees you, uh, it, the more it'll upset him. And I re- that's really what I'm aiming for here. Tag any of us on Twitter with that. I think we'd be happy to see that hashtag tagged in us. So where, yes. where can we find you guys on Twitter? Uh, it's uh, easy. You can find me uh, at Ryu Wilson. That's R-Y-U Wilson. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested in It's pronounced Ryu. Mm, it's debatable. It's closer to Ryan. <laughs> so I, I, I prefer, uh, you know, Ryu. <laughs> Ryu would be closer to Ryan, but I prefer Ryu. Uh but if you want to check out any of my glass, uh, I got an Instagram. Um, it's Hadouken underscore glass on Instagram. I'm actually getting ready for a big trade show. Don't forget, I won't be on next week. So if you guys either want to three-man it or potentially might be a good time to bring on a guest. I've never so. had a three-way before. Mm. It's enjoyable. All these four ways. <laughs> four is a crowd. Three. For all the people who uh, got BC's reference at the start, uh, whilst Wilson does make some amazing glass products, he unfortunately does not make anal beads. Uh, we have asked profusely many times. I feel like this is a growth se- sector for you. Really an opportunity for growth. Revolver it's a growing market in the beads. UK, though, according to Gary. It's a, it's a growing market. I may have to dip my toes. <laughs> I think you have to dip more than that. <laughs> nailed it this guy alright guys that's going to wrap up the show thank you so much for watching we will see you next week hopefully with Beastly in tow next week and a special guest bye love you guys I lost OBS it's going to take me a second it's not going to be a very dramatic close well, you got to give it that, that you know there's that